or two ago, maybe? So, like, we all had to change our passwords and stream keys. So I'm not actually sure if OBS will start my stream. We're about to find out. It looks like it's working. Pog champ. All right, all right. Um, let's see. Yep, it says we're live. Cool. If anyone else wants to test to make sure, I would appreciate it. Oh. If only I would get that money. You can hear me so far in the stream? All right. Uh, okay, try talking. Ah, oh, desktop audio isn't picking up anything. Well, let's go into settings then. Okay, try talking now. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem like it worked. Okay, try now. Bro, what is up with this? Okay, try now. Um, I don't know, try again. Nope. Anything now? Nope. Bro, why did my desktop audio suddenly stop working? Well, I can hear you on Discord, but we can't hear anyone over desktop. It's not picking up on the stream. Yes. Well, I don't think I've ever had desktop audio not work. For some reason it says there's some desktop audio device that's disabled, but there's <laughs> literally, I don't even know how that could be possible. Okay, try it one more time. Nope. See if it works in this other scene. I guess people just start making noises and we'll see if we eventually get it to work.
Thanks. Hmm. Try with some music and see if that does anything. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> well, yeah, it, it's picking up the uh, it's picking up the uh. Picking up the desktop audio, but it's not picking up Discord. That is so bizarre. Hi. See Buzz Light here. Okay, try it now. This time it'll work. Oh, it did! Or at least it's showing up on OBS. About oh, yes, it did. I heard myself. Yay. I mean, there's like a five second pause for sure. So. Oh, yeah, streams are just delayed. All right, Pock Champ, we got it. Let's do it, boys. Sorry for like the 20 minute delay to starting stream. Um, but now that we're here and we can actually hear our lovely players, for those of you joining us, it's been a long time. What happened? Well, life happened to your boy, the storyteller here. Yo, what's up, Exclamity? Sorry, I was trying to fix the audio issues. Thanks for giving Exclamity a sub, anonymous gifter. Um, and thanks for letting me know you can hear people. Um, but anyway, it's been like two or three months since we played. Reason being, because me, storyteller, Ayler here, had some serious life shit go down and was unable to even think about preparing for a game. And barely able to complete my grad school stuff, so you know, rough times. That was rather fortuitous as it turns out, because several of our other players ended up being stupid busy, so we probably wouldn't have gotten to play anyways. Or maybe I'm just trying to make them feel better. Probably that. But anyway, for our players, and you know who you are, I want to reread to you before we do our usual. And remember, our usual is we um, roll the intro vid, then we give some exposition and dive into the story. Other way around, I think, right? We do the exposition, then the intro vid. Does anyone remember? Yes, I think you do your exposition, and then you do your intro vid. Okay, so yeah, so we do a little exposition, um, and then we'll roll the intro vid, and then we'll jump right into our first scene. But for the players concerned in that first scene, and you know who you are, I want to just remind you of the outside environment from where you are. Because again, it's been like three months, and I want to make sure you have this firmly in mind to constrain the decisions you're about to make. Are you ready, players, for this information you need to know? Ready. Ready. Yeah. Yep. As ready as I'll ever be. 
All right. So, again, this is just a reminder to constrain the possible decisions you might make. You were dropped off in a small parking lot near basketball courts, a playground, and a small sports park. The slithering streets before you coiled around various charity organizations, a media company, a church, and on the far end, a condo building and a dry cleaner. No matter where you looked on these streets, you realized that the streets were poised like vipers waiting to strike at you the moment you revealed your monstrous natures. You were painfully aware that these few blocks that you were investigating were not a safe space for your kind. Which means that you will need to be exceptionally careful in this area to avoid further violating the masquerade. So, with that in mind, let us turn now to the long-awaited exposition. And for dramatic effect, let's turn off the music. All right, our exposition. <clears throat> Mistakes in a kindred's existence can be deadly. In a world where everyone dissembles camaraderie and cooperation, it only takes one errant gesture, one misplaced message, or the prospect of a single threat to compromise that tenuous trust, that thin layer of black ice, upon which all kindred precariously stand. And, when the consequences of that fractured trust are damnation and certain death, one can be assured that forgiveness, reconciliation, redemption, second chances, all the warm, fuzzy, heart-touching aspects that make for an endearing human relationship are, <coughs> are impossibilities and absurdities for kindred that not even a Malkavian would dare dream up. Without even the facade of trust between kindred, one truth becomes painfully clear. It is only a matter of time until one's mistakes catch up to them. When those mistakes do come knocking, though, and they will, how will the guilty kindred face their judgment? Most kindred have no say in the matter. For sufficiently powerful kindred, like a prince, a primogen, or another member of Camarilla's court, however, a mistake might be covered up by discharging favors or granting protections to the opportunistic kindred who dared uncover or perhaps stumble into the discovery of said mistake. In fact, many curious kindred suspect that such an exchange explains why Garrett, a kindred of unknown provenance, still walks the night. Even if such rumors are unfounded, they are dangerous nonetheless. For when one has the attention of all the kindred of Chicago trained on oneself, one cannot possibly hope to conceal one's shortcomings. If the dangerous ire and curiosity of the Chicago kindred can be stoked for something as seemingly innocent as merely existing, what might their reaction be to discovering that in an attempt to contain a masquerade breach was compounded by further masquerade breaches? For Mike especially, but also his allies of circumstance, Ryder, Hermes, Garrett, and Charlotte, that is a question to which they hope they never learn the answer. Luckily, or perhaps not so luckily, for Mike, he may have accepted an arrangement that at least seems to guarantee himself and his reluctant companions a few more nights of unlife provided he and the others produced the desired results of the sponsor. Is this debt to which Mike, the others, and unbeknownst to her, even the absent Charlotte, agreed a boon or the beginning of their final downfall? Let us find out in tonight's continuation of our vampire story. Chapter 4. The Sinews of Thy Heart
Welcome back. Looking at the mass grave before you a second time, Mike and the others who are currently here, you sense an insidious pattern. Exsanguinated bodies lined, lined the wall in a U-shape. A sick curtain. Eviscerated bodies splayed out flatly on the floor. Gory rugs. Heads petrified into expressions of terror hanging from nails centered on each wall. Lurid art. Bones from multiple victims contorting the limbs of the, de of the deceased into fixed patterns. Grisly furniture. The trail of blood leading from the stairs to the back wall. A red carpet. Each violated and mutilated victim forms the macabre decor of this concrete basement area, tailing a tale of two feedings. You have just incapacitated the frenzying kindred in this room. And now, you must decide what to do. I'm just gonna walk around and be like, I didn't think we'd get this far. I'm gonna All leave right. it to the people smarter than me to handle it from here. We <sighs> need to get out of here, because I fired a gun. That's probably a good idea. Yes, let's go, and... Uh, I... But when the cops find this... Uh, hmm... Set it on fire. What'd you say? Set it on fire. That's gonna be... Potentially even worse. How? How could possibly send something on fire, so that way we can get rid of the evidence, make it worse? Because there'd be evidence of a fire. Yeah, but none of those creatures will be around. Unless there's a better idea. Because I do not do have even, one. Do we even have something for fire? Just looking at Mike and getting ready in case he goes you know, berserk. Uh... You can see that all the blood vessels in his body are just bulging out and he's twitching every time someone says the word fire. I, I look at Garrett and I say, stop using Oh that. shit! Stop using what? Dude, I'm sorry. That word. What word? Alright. The word for shiny, smoky, bright, orange thing. Okay, so if we're not starting a fire, what are we- what are we doing? Hey, take the unconscious body I have and swing her like a bat at him. Garrett, are you going to take this bodily clubbing? Uh, I wanna dodge. Alright, dex athletics, Mike, uh, strength and roll. I would like to try to disarm him of this body. I don't know, but uh, I... I mean, Mike's a pretty buff dude. You... What is it? Uh... It's uh, Dex Athletics? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can make a Dex Athletics if you would like, mm, Ryder. I think I win. It's going to be at a minus one penalty, though, because he is actively swinging it. Oh no, Mike rolled a messy crit. Well, go, uh, ahead, yeah. go ahead and roll Ryder, but I don't think it matters what you roll. <laughs> Two. Yeah, with seven successes and a messy crit. Um, it's a good thing that this body is that of a kindred, because as he smashes you over the head with this body, Garrett, not only do you hit the floor, you take one point of superficial damage, and you hear a sickening crunch as one of the shoulders pops completely out of socket for this girl, whoever she is, from the force of the blow. Oh, can we not do that? I'm gonna say it once. Do not say that word again. Or things will get really bad for everyone involved. Ow! 
I'm I'm sorry. It's just that that triggers me. I what? can't. I I just walk away. I just. What was the damage? One superficial. Okay. I say we take the kindred and have the high roughs deal with her and just leave all this shit. Or we can do what was uh, a month ago. I guess just make a contact with one of your people. I don't have a phone, so I don't know what any of you guys could do. Ryder, I think you're better with contacting people. What? Do you, you think I have a way up to, out of this mess? Well, don't you have a phone to your... to your boss? Well, yeah, but we work food supply, not cleaning up a mess like this, and I just look at all the gore in the room. Fair enough. It's at this moment, while you are deliberating your options, and some of you on the verge of murdering more than just the deceased. The floorboards above you moan ominously under the weight of some other presence. Oh, shit. Oh, this is not going to be good. Hmm? So, what would you all like to do? Uh, can I use I... raw specs to try to sense anything? Do you mean like heightened senses or something? Raw specs, uh, what is it? Sense the unseen. Uh, that only works on the floor that you're in, but sure. Uh, in that case, nah. Ryder, did you say something? Yeah, I'm gonna try to move towards a corner to, like, blend my shape into shadows and then turn off the light that I had so uh, okay. so we could all see before yep all right so you turn you go to the back corner of the room keep in mind there are bodies hanging everywhere and it's absolutely disgusting yep but I, I just try not to touch any of them yep you turn off the light so that means the rest of you now have a very hard time of seeing what's happening I'm going to try to move my way uh, to the one of the corners on the wall with the door. The door and crouch is, down. The door is at the top of the stairwell, which is where you and Ryder were. No, well, at the stairwell. You're gonna go walk up the stairwell. No, 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 no. On the on the wall that's oh, okay. by the stairwell. All right. So you squeeze this... beside the stairwell on the wall. No, 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 no. no. I'm sorry. I'm uh, on the wall to the entrance. I'm gonna go uh, by the one of the corners on that wall. Okay. And crouch down, try to hide myself. Mike and Garrett. Uh, I'm gonna activate Cloak of Shadows. All right. So uh, as long as you don't move, you are yep. invisible to the naked eye. And Garrett, the kindred who's all the talk these days, what are you going to do? So everyone is hiding. Well, they have moved to the corners of the room. Well, I don't really understand the significance of this, so I'm just standing my ground and seeing what happens. Alright. So anyone would like to try to listen to what might be happening, give me a wits and awareness roll. Actually, rather than everyone roll it, 
whoever has the highest roll, and then add one dice for every person who's participating in it. Uh, I have four. I and have four also. Uh, five. Uh, so Ryder so far seems to be the highest. Oh. I have five. All right. Oh, so... so between the two of them, and I'm actively helping. Yeah. All right. So Ryder, go ahead and roll wits and awareness, and add two to the roll. Ooh, a messy crit. Keep in mind you can spend willpower if you want to reroll that 110 and try to avoid a crit. If you think it's worth it. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Alright, so hit the willpower reroll, and when it asks you how many, just type in one. Alright, so you avoid the messy crits, and instead just have five successes. Go ahead and put a slash mark through one of your willpower. The difficulty was three. So, you are able to not only hear someone very quietly creeping around upstairs, but you can faintly make out a couple other voice that, voices that sound like they're coming from outside the building, but you can only catch pieces of the conversation. He's doing, one voice says, muffled noises. Another voice says, with us, more muffled noises, it. The first voice. Muffled noises, the second voice. Wrong? The second voice. The door? And then it gets muffled and trails off. Uh, uh, just from the words that we can hear, can I recognize if they're like officers talking to each other or just do the tones sound like normal? Like, Casual civilians or like professionals? Not really sure that's something you can make out through heavily muffled voices. But you are aware that there are two people outside and you hear someone else inside. I'm, I'm gonna activate a. Hold on, let me check. Uh, Silence of Death. Okay. And then, uh, uh, is there any kind of light source coming that from this? That requires check, does it not? Uh, no, it's just free, because it's, it's just like uh, a sound absorber on my own person. Uh, the only light source in here was the flashlight that you had. Uh, then I'm gonna put my palm over the the flashlight and then just try to turn it back on and then uh, shining it towards very closely towards the ground I'm almost like crouch walking at this point I'm gonna try to move find my way towards the door okay remember that you are in a basement so you have to go up creaky stairs and then there's the church chapel and the main doors to the outside. The voices uh, you heard so... were coming from completely outside the building. You could only hear them, in fact, because of your messy crit. And also, because of your messy crit. Oh no, you changed the messy crit, never mind. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to make my way towards the uh, stair. Uh, but I don't go up there yet. I'm just going to stay at the opening and hopefully I hear something else. Alright. Give me a dexterity and stealth check. Oh wait, actually, never mind. You don't make any noise. So yeah, you're fine. Well, yeah. you are shining light, so go ahead and make a roll anyway. Because the door is wide open. Uh, if I use all specs, uh, will I sense that anything supernatural comes within the range? If you use sense um, unseen, you will yeah. know, be able to see if there's something invisible potentially, or if there's a supernatural. Oh creature. yeah. Okay. And senses is the one that will let you enhance your senses to possibly hear outside the building. Fair enough. I'll keep that in mind next time. Thank you. Only one success on that roll. All right. So, 
You're moving around, and although your feet make no noises, your hand is covering up a light. The door to this basement is wide open, and you did hear footsteps coming from the floor above you. And as you, cl you slowly kind of crouch walk, the slight um, pivoting in your hands just from the motions does send a bit of light up the stairwell. And you hear a commanding voice echo down the basement stairwell after that. It says, if you know what's good for you, come out with your hands up. Sounds like a feminine voice. And Garrett, as you're just kind of standing there, and everyone else is kind of in different corners of the room, you hear an incoherent whispering emanating from behind you. I check behind me. You turn to behold the head of one of the people rugs, slowly tearing itself off the corpse. Its ears explode as large, stumpy appendages resembling arms burst out and roll under the head. All the while, the whispering intensifies into an incomprehensible chant punctuated by gurgling and vomiting of blood, and it begins to move towards you. Oh. Uh. In response to seeing this, Garrett, I need you to roll me a frenzy test. Oh, boy. You are still very new to the kindred, and even for the rest of you, if you happen to see this, this takes the cake for something What's truly horrific. The difficulty? Three. Three. Right. Wow, six successes. So, you know, the human part of you wants to freak out and scream running out of here. But that monster inside of you kind of crushes down on that human part. And you remain in control. But this thing crawling at you is worse than your worst nightmare. Uh, can I stomp it? You can try to kick it, yes. Yeah, that's what all. What are you going to do about the voice you heard commanding you all to come out? Uh... Did that sound like the, the the voice of like an officer, or it was just a general commanding voice? I'm not sure that officers have a particular sound to their voice, uh, so I'm not sure uh, you're getting it. Okay, I'll try to specify. Does it sound like she's repeated this line a lot of times? Like she's just uh, repeating it like authoritative, a very. I mean, it does sound like she is someone who expects to be listened to, but lots of people sound like that. So quickly, what does everyone intend to um, do? I'm gonna put on my mask and, and like uh, my eye patch and pull up my hoodie. Okay. I'm stomping that uh, head in. The crawling head? Yeah. Mike is invisible. Hermes. I am staying where the hell I am. <laughs> Just trying to crouch down and look as small as possible. Alright. A few seconds pass in which none of you respond. And that commanding voice echoes down the stairwell again although this time much less patient and more annoyed than before. She says, I'm going to give you one last chance to come out here and converse about what you're doing, and that's my final offer. Barring that, we're about to start clubbing heads together first and consider questions if you're still alive second. Garrett, roll me strength and brawl. As this thing has now, it's whispering, has now elevated into an incoherent chant and you hear the person outside say what the hell is going on down there zero successes as it leaps at you as you attack it as well Ooh, <laughs> that's a critical success on the heads part 
that's one, two, three, four, six successes. Oof. So Garrett, you try to reach out and stomp on this creepy chanting whispering head thing, but it's very quick. It leaps, almost catapults itself off the ground, missing your foot, and buries its gnawing teeth into your stomach and begins ripping apart your flesh as you take three points of superficial damage. Okay. And at this point, it can't help but let out a kind of grunt as you're knocked over from the force and the chanting. You hear this gurgling and vomiting of blood as it's tearing through flesh. It's definitely not the sort of thing that you can just hide and go away from now. Yeah, the rest of us, do we notice this now? Oh, you definitely do. And if you look over to see what's oh, happening, fuck. give me a terror frenzy test at difficulty three. We're making a what test? A frenzy test. Oh shit! The difficulty is three. Oh no, Hermes. <laughs> so Ryder, you turn around and see this horrific thing. You've never seen it before. It's utterly disgusting. Even though you're in this terrible place, you manage to barely keep control of yourself. Hermes, however, Mike, you're good too. You don't break your invisibility. Hermes, however, this is more horrific than anything you even had nightmares about. Even after what you went through a few years ago with your family, this almost seems to trigger some of those repressed memories. And you don't want any part of that. The beast utterly consumes you and you have to get out of here now. I run immediately. To the goddamn uh, stairwell, screaming, running up. All right, so you go screeching out. The person just kind of knocking over the person there. You go sprinting out the door. The rest of you, what are you doing? As the person gonna... on the stairwell is like, "Hey, get back here!" It's like, "You all better come out of here, or it's gonna be worse." And you hear them taking off after uh, Hermes. Uh, I'm... I'm gonna go help Garrett. I'm gonna punt that thing. Yeah, I'm gonna help Garrett too, but I take out the taser that I, that I tried to use on the lady, but failed. Okay, so you're gonna try to tase this thing? Yep. Okay. Garrett, you are currently basically being tackled and having your stomach ripped apart by this thing. What would you like to try to do? Uh, I am trying to get up and, like, leave, honestly. All right, well, two things. Keep in mind it has like stumpy arm-like appendages that are now wrapped around your waist and it's oh. literally bitten into and through your waist. Uh, I am trying to pull this thing off of me and like throw it across like the room. All right, so it's a little bit complicated. Go ahead and give me strength and brawl. Mike, I need you to take a minus two penalty to your roll because it's grappling him and he's kind of covering the whole thing up, trying to rip it off of himself. So would it just be four then? Yes. Um, and Ryder, give me a strength and brawl roll, also at minus two. And if you fail, you're going to taste the shit out of your companion. There's very little room for you to work with here. Ooh. Ooh. All right. So. Let me explain how this all works out. Garrett, you're on the ground, struggling, trying to tear this thing off. Ryder and Mike come rushing over. As you're trying to tear it off, Mike kicks back his foot, is going for a full soccer punt towards you, and Ryder plunges a taser down at you. You've got these... People who are supposed to be your allies on both sides getting ready to like absolutely destroy you. So you try to leap up, but Garrett, or I mean Ryder, accidentally stabs you in the chest with a taser, sending a jolt through you. You collapse back down to the ground, going completely stiff, leading Mike to not only kick the head, but also to punt Garrett up the stairs. 
Now, Mike, you have potence, don't you? Uh, yes. I was not using potence? lethal body. You only have one dot, okay. Yeah, so, I only have one dot. But I was not, yeah, no, not using lethal body on this. Anyway. So, as you, you kick into his arm and into the creature that's biting into him, you kind of thrust Mike about six inches across the concrete floor. Mike, or I mean, Gary, to kind of bump your head into the stairwell, making more noise. Um, but go ahead and make me a stamina plus resolve roll. Carrot. Difficulty is two. Delph, stamina. Stamina and resolve. Stamina and resolve. All right. So, this horrific jolt going through your body causes your muscles to contract and contort rapidly and out of sync. It's jarring. However, you're able to maintain enough control to where you don't end up losing this next turn due to the paralysis. However, at this point, you begin to hear some commotion outside. And it doesn't sound great. So, what are you doing? Uh, so it's still chanting. Still, it's... yeah, it's really creepy too, because it's like literally ripping out your stomach, and in between like slurping and still vomiting blood, it's like gasping, chanting, and incoherent something. And it's wrapped around you and kind of eaten into some of your stomach. And nothing we have done is able to break it. Well, you haven't really done anything to it yet. It seems like it's a little bit stronger than you expected just a head with stumpy arms to be. So this grotesque little thing, uh, it's trying to consume his abdomen. It looks like it's just, uh, just eating him, yeah. Uh, does its flesh like look human too, since it tore off like one of the human bodies? Yes, it used to belong to a human, but now it's all gross and contorted and disfigured from this horrific transformation. And keep in mind, I... the people outside did say that they were about to come in and start clubbing heads if you didn't come out. Okay, uh, one last attempt. I'm gonna uh, rush towards uh, Mike, was it? That's being eaten? Garrett. No, it's Garrett. Oh, Garrett. I'm, not com I'm gonna rush towards Garrett. I'm gonna grab this creature. I'm, I'm gonna bite it instead. Okay, well, keep in mind that there's kind of a wrestling match going on between Garrett and this thing. This thing is like holding Garrett and burrowing into his stomach, and Garrett's like thrashing about trying to tear it off of him. So it's not exactly easy to try to grab or to really yeah. do much to. So but go ahead I'm, and. I'm make... just. I'm basically trying to gamble that the. the Like the, the Kindred's kiss can somehow uh, weaken this thing. Yeah. Go ahead and make strength athletics, but at a minus one penalty. Garrett and Mike. What was it again? I'm sorry. Athletic and uh. Strength and athletics. If you're trying to tear it off, you still. And off. Okay. Can I try and grapple it? Can I try and help? You can just add a bonus dice to Garrett. So Garrett, roll one more dice. Oh, Wait, why is Ryder trying to do this and not the mixed martial artist? <laughs> Alright, so three successes for Garrett. F four successes for it. So, um, Garrett and Mike, as you're both struggling trying to tear this thing off of him, it continues to bite into him, and it has a very deep grip into now the muscles of his undead flesh as it's very hard to tear this creature off of him without also potentially doing some serious damage to Garrett. Um, two successes for Ryder so it's going to try to dodge you 
with a minus one penalty. That is three successes. So you try to, while they're wrestling trying to do this, you try to just kind of reach out and snap at it, almost like an angry puppy. But you bite the air as Garrett and Mike are just thrashing back and forth trying to tear this thing off. It's really hard to bite anything without biting your friends. Well, friends is a strong word. You now hear more commotion outside, and it sounds like it's about to get really hairy. I'm going to look at Ryder and tell him to go to the top of the stairs. I have a better chance of getting this off of him than you do. I uh, sigh, some time. nod my head, and uh, cover up myself, mask, eye patch, hood, everything. And then uh, I put on my street punk voice that I used to use in my uh, previous job. And then I'm going to go, 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 okay, okay, uh, uh, just... Give me a second, they're coming, coming up right now. Just, just, just trying not to pee my pants. And then I'm gonna, uh, slowly, not slowly, just in a normal pace, just walk up the stairs with my hands up, palms out. Alright, and do you plan to actually exit the building? Uh, up the stairs, uh, first and see what happened. Alright, well as you reach the top of the stairs, you see that the doors are open. And you see some shadows outside. And it appears that people are waiting. And they're hollering. Not really hollering, but they're more like very sternly saying, Come on out. You've ruined your chance to talk. This is going to get messy now. Look, look, I'll cooperate, man. I'm just trying to find a place to huddle up for the night, okay? Just, just, just don't, don't beat me up. We're still not out here. Can you hear the voice getting? Really I'm I'm excited? slowly walking, man. I I don't know if you got a gun or something. I, are you a cop? Garrett, you take one more point of superficial damage through this wrestling of the creature as it's continuing to bite and gnaw into your undead flesh. Okay. What would you two like to do? So now that Ryder's out of the way, can I actually get my hands on this thing and try and grapple it? Garrett, are you intending to stop thrashing around and allow Mike to try to grab this thing? Yes. Alright, so you do nothing this turn, which leaves you defenseless against this creature. So, Mike, give me strength and athletics. Sorry, strength and brawl. This creature is going to attack Garrett, who has stopped moving to try to give you the chance to get it off of him, which means that it only has to beat a difficulty of one to continue hurting you, Garrett. I'm going to spend willpower. How many can I re-roll out of my dice pool? Three. Alright, luckily, it only got two successes. So, as Garrett calms, the creature is... <laughs> bites in further. You take one point of superficial damage, Garrett, as Mike reaches down. Now, Mike... Remember, this thing has a lash into his stomach, so how do you plan on removing this creature? Um, I know this might hurt me a little bit, but I planned on taking my hands, balling them into a fist, and then kind of forcing its jaw open to get its teeth out of his flesh, and then just pulling it towards myself. It's going to hurt him regardless, but try to minimize the damage. Alright, so since you succeeded on that roll... It chews into Garrett's a little bit more. You manage to, as it's chewing, it, you can see it's getting ready to go really deeper, and it might actually take out some muscle. But at that moment, you thrust your fist into its jaw as it clamps down on you, and as it's biting, you can feel your undead flesh tearing. You, almost like you're uh, pulling one of those weight machines that go around your wrist, you know? You're pulling mm -hmm. one of those things as you tear it off of Garrett, tearing out a healthy amount of flesh from his stomach you also take one point of superficial damage Mike just from its continued biting as you tear it off of mm -hmm. Garrett and you can also hear Ryder putting on this performance and people shouting that it's you've lost your chance to talk it's gonna get ugly now so, okay so is this thing still chances? kicking Oh yes, it's still very much alive, and in fact, as your wrist is still in its jaws, it's getting ready to try to clamp down onto you. I'm gonna try... So, it's just a head, right? 
It's a head with two stumpy arms that have protruded out of its skull, and it suddenly has very sharp teeth. I'm going to try and rip my hand out of its mouth, grab it by its two stumpy arms, then just slam it face first into a wall. All right. Ripping your hand, ripping your arm out of its very sharp mouth is going to cost you one more point of superficial damage. Mm-hmm. Um, but since you are currently holding it, you don't have to make any other rules. You smack it against the wall. Go ahead and give me strength and brawl just to see if you're able to hurt it. Three successes. All right. So you deal one point of superficial damage to this thing. As you smack it against the wall, it lets out this sickening, like grunt choke as it slides to the wall, continuing to regurgitate blood and bile. But you have a moment where this thing's not immediately on either of you. Uh, I'm just going to keep slamming it into a wall until it just stops moving. So you're going to ignore the commotion outside and continue focusing on this thing. Uh, yeah. All right, Garrett, what do you intend to do? Oh, uh, so I got all and slashes. And also, by the way, what are you two doing about the unconscious kindred slash girl that's lying here beside you? Um, I mean, I would look at Garrett and just say, take her and try and get her out of there. I don't know. I'll be up in a minute once I'm done with this thing. What about the people up there? I, I mean, you can go check it out, st stash her up top. If it's bad, try and take her and leave, and then uh, I'll go kamikaze and see what will happen. I don't know. I'm just going to put her in the middle of the steps. That works. And then if things get hairy, you can figure it out. I put the gun. I try to hide the gun on the back of my pants. Okay. Put my shirt down and uh, go up the stairs. Okay. Are you just leaving the basement or are you also going out the front door? Uh. So I see when I go up the stairs the front door, I see, uh, Ryder. At this point, he is, you can see him walking out the front door with his hands up, and he's, like, stammering and stuff. Okay. So are you planning on following him, or are you staying at that basement door? I'm staying at that basement door for a little bit. Seeing what happens. Alright. Well, Hermes... You are out of control and terrified, so you don't even process the two figures that are waiting for you. You are just sprinting, trying to get out of here in sheer terror, and one of them reaches up as you are sprinting and tries to almost like suplex you as you're running by. So give me strength and brawl. That'll go well. That went well. <laughs> Ooh. Well, that was seven successes on their part. So, as you, you're trying to spread away, this figure rushes in, kind of picks you up by the waist, and just slams you on the ground on your head. You take... Let's see, that was six successes. You rolled zero. You take three points of superficial damage. And that kind of jars you out of your frenzy, as you are now just, like, smashed... Your head's been smashed onto the ground. You're staying oh. Okay, okay, okay. And Ryder, you now come outside the door. And since you are not currently insane, you can see that what just utterly slammed Hermes into the ground is a feminine-looking person in a black studded leather jacket, ripped up blue jeans, and black leather boots, who's was standing next to a bespectacled blonde woman wearing an on-fleek, single-buttoned red blazer and high-rise tapered maroon pants. After suplexing Hermes, the leather-jacketed person throws back their long auburn hair over their shoulder, which reveals that the left side of their head is shaped, and they glare at you and Hermes, their dimly luminous at ochre eyes betraying their true nature. And as you're continuing on your whole 
Oh, I don't know, I'm sorry, you cops. Routine. They speak with barely bottled anger reverberating in their voice. You have exactly ten seconds to identify yourselves and tell us what the fuck you think you're doing here. Uh, my, my name is Johnson, uh, but uh, I'm just trying to hold up for the night, man. I, I got ain't got nothing to do with that guy. He, we were just like minding our own business. Uh, uh, he, he's shot up something. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to sleep. And then he just screamed. And then I think he OD'd, man. Uh, Look, I, I ain't got no drugs on me or some shit. I'm, I'm, I'm being clean for three months. Just, just, I don't want trouble, man. <laughs> when he says that, when he says that, I mouth, really? I don't say that out loud, I just mouth it. Really? The figure who was already on the verge of flying off the handle, you can hear the leather squeaking as their muscles tense with every single word you utter, like it's a violent assault against their person. And the next thing you know, they're in front of you, getting ready to deck you right in the nose. How do you respond? I, I cover up my head and then I duck. Like a coward. Dex and athletics. Five successes on their part against your two. That's three. So you take one point of superficial damage as uh, this, I'm, as this I'm gonna fist. take it then and then just relax and let myself flop to the floor. This heavy fist is like concrete as it collides into your nose and ocular bones. If you were living, you were absolutely certain that your nose and ocular bones would be absolutely shattered. Hurts knocks you back a few paces and the figure now, vehement in their display, says, Drop the bullshit. There's no way some homeless druggy wannabe is with another lick. What the fuck oh. are you doing here? Do you know that poaching... That's the, been happening? The bespectacled blonde woman pushes up her glasses in amusement and says, Poaching? I have no idea what you're talking about. Can I roll insight on that? Sure. Uh, what was it? Insight? Will it? Wits? Yep. So, you're uh, spending uh, time assessing whether this blonde figure is truthful or not. Ryder, what are you doing? Uh, how much superficial damage did I take? He took one. By the way, Garrett, you heard this. You heard what sounded like an absolutely devastating punch just connected with Ryder. You watched him get kind of knocked back a few paces from the force of the blow. What are you doing? I, uh, slowly back away from that situation, head back down where Mike is. Mike. Uh-huh. The thing spins around and leaps at your face. How do you respond? Uh, can I just overpower it, deck it straight in the forehead, and send it back into the wall? Sure. This is a matter of quickness, though. I'm gonna have you roll dexterity and brawl. Okay. Because this creature, even though it's a stumpy little head, is quite nimble. Oof. Three successes for it. So it leaps at you. You're, again, never seen this creature before, surprised by how quick it is. But you're able to just barely interpose your fist between its leaping as it, you kind of punch it in the teeth as it falls back to the ground. And then it lets out a horrific screech that you are certain can be heard from outside. Herb stomp saying, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. The bespectacled woman outside says, what is that? The raging figure in the leather looks as impossible as it may sound, even more pissed off. They reach out to grab you by the collar, Ryder, to pick you up. Uh, 
Ah, uh, okay. Are you going to let this happen? Well, for now, I'll say, okay. Just, I'll try to tell you what I know. Just, just don't beat me up again. I lift you up. You can see the hatred burning in their ochre eyes, and they say, We tried to give you that chance, and you went and fucked it up. That's too late look, for you. And look, goes, I couldn't, or sorry, I couldn't to, see. Before you can even say that, they go to slam you head first into the ground. Is that really necessary? If you would like to try to break free, you can make a strength and brawl roll. Since you let yourself be grappled, though, I'll say you have a minus one penalty. Uh, I won't resist, but do I have a chance to say something else now? Or is my mouth, like, in concrete? No, it's more like, as, after she's, after they, sorry, after they said that, they immediately turn to try to slam you. So you'll get, like, one word out before your head hits the pavement. Uh, and uh, that was a critical success on their part. Uh, it's... Uh, So I, I can't do anything, right? Except for trying to break out of this before you get completely slammed into the ground. Okay, uh, I'm gonna... Since I, I'm being picked up by the collar, I'm gonna tuck my, uh, my legs up and then like push as hard as I can towards this person. I'm gonna with minus one. Basically, I'm gonna try to use the strength I have for soaring leap to push this lady away. Okay. Two successes. Unfortunately, they rolled one, two, three, seven successes. Jesus. Okay. So. It's good for you, reduce it to 5, the margin's only 5, so half of that is 3. As they lift you up and then just slam you into the concrete, face first, what does that do to your health track? You take 3 superficial damage. Oh uh, yeah, I start taking aggravated. So your health track is filled up. Yep. Alright, well at this point, you can feel some of the bones crunching. You can feel your teeth cutting the insides of your gums from the impact on the pavement. Um, blood, you don't bleed unless you want to. But you can tell that your body's starting to get torn up and you have rocks all embedded in your face. And this figure, after dropping you on the ground, races into the abandoned, seemingly abandoned Baptist church. The lady with the spectacles. Oh yeah, uh, that was two successes on the insight. Um, two successes. You don't really get the sense that this person, this creature, believes you. Whenever you say there's been poaching, so it's it is a bit of a sarcastic response, but not in the sense that like, oh yes, but what are you? More of like, oh yeah, sure. Um. She just shakes her head in disappointment. By the way, you're still on the ground, Hermes, unless you would like to get up. Um, am I still pinned down? No, you just got slammed on your head in the ground. Hey, can I get up, or am I going to get beat down again? We tried to give you the chance to talk, but you all played the cowards, so... You already played your hand, I'm afraid. I'm staying down, then. It's probably for the best. Uh, Garrett, you hear the crunching of bone and pavement outside as you can see the shadow of riders getting absolutely bodied, and then you now see this leathered figure racing into the church. I was uh, heading down to Mike. You were, and you hear all this and see all this. Um... Okay, she so that she is running in. Correct. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm heading to Mike as fast as I can and picking up the Kimberly body I left. All right. Well, as they race into the doorway, 
Mike, you try to stomp on the creature, go ahead and give me strength and brawl. Okay. This other individual reaches the stairwell. Just as Garrett goes to pick up the body, and the figure on the stairwell says, The fuck are you doing with her? And leaps down the stairwell and is getting ready to try to slam their elbow into the back of your head. Like, Garrett. I use my gun, and I'm going to quick draw and fire her. All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> you have a body in your hands currently, so are you just dropping the body on the floor? Yep. All right, so you just drop the body on the floor and go to quick draw and make that roll. Dexterity and firearms plus your specialty. Okay, don't let down, Garrett. We're going to need to gives me around. a plus two, right? Plus one. Plus one, okay. I just want to be sure. And I'm going to re-roll. Okay, mark off a point of willpower. Oh, that... Uh, question, what does Blood Surge do again? You don't know make a why strength, you did and that. And you can add two dice to the next roll you make. Okay. Well, you pick a stat, and then the next roll gets plus two dice. Uh... There we go. Wait, why did it do that? You're supposed to click willpower reroll and type in how many dice to reroll. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's been a while. <laughs> That's fine. So, a total of... Wait, it looks like you already rolled like three times for firearms. Because I didn't know how to do the He was messing up the reroll, so he did the reroll correct. Okay. So, it should be five. Should be five. Okay, sorry, I had to count their successes. Nine successes on their part. So, you quick draw, turn around, and in the moment that you do that, the figure has already leapt down the stairs, and with a heavy fist that feels like a concrete pillar being broken over your face, they punch you square in between the eyes. Uh, let's see. You had five successes, and they rolled nine, so that's two superficial damage to you, and you do get your shot off as they take one point of superficial damage. And this knocks you down the stairs, Garrett. Mm. Mike, what did you roll? Uh, sorry, I have to scroll back up. I rolled five to curb stomp the head. All right. Oh, it rolled a critical success, wow. So that's four, or five, six, seven successes. All right, so you tried to curb stomp it, but it actually dodges your stomp, leaps onto your ankle, and tears through your clothing and tears out a chunk of your ankle as you take two points of superficial damage. Hmm. So, the figure that just decked you in the face, you heard it, you heard them say something about the body. And they seem very mad and violent now. What is everyone's plan here? Um, this... Okay, just out of curiosity. Is this the voice of the person I met at Elysium? No. Not the hunter person? Correct. You do not, okay. you do not recognize these voices. So, uh, I'm still above ground, right? You are. You've just been absolutely bodied. Uh, is there anyone pitting me down? No, you just got absolutely curb stomped and then left there. So, sorry, we'll start from the top. Um, Garrett, what's your intention? Then we'll go to Ryder, and then uh, Mike, and then Hermes. Uh, so I got kicked down pretty much. I'm at the bottom of the stairs now. Correct. I look at Mike and I say, we have kindreds, and I run to the corner of the room and have my gun pointed down waiting for her to run down all right so that's going to be like your entire action is running up through the corner of the room and trying to ready a draw yep Ryder. uh there were two strangers right yes there's now only one which is the bespectacled woman outside who is shaking her head disappointingly and slowly walking towards the church now 
dude, does she seem like she's paying me any any attention? I mean, she's definitely aware that you're there, if that's what you mean. Like, uh, I'm basically just waiting until she gets into the building for me to get out of here. Okay, so you're gonna try to wait till she passes and then start sprinting for your life? Yeah, basically. Alright. Uh, right, Mike. Okay, when he says Kindred... Uh, can I talk and fight at the same time? Depends on what you mean by talk. So, I was just going to say we were sent here to capture that frenz frenzied Kindred while I'm trying to rip this thing off my ankle. Can I do both of those at the same time? Yes. Alright. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna turn around and say we were we 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 were sent here to capture this frenzied kindred. I don't know what the fuck's going on, and what the fuck is this thing on my ankles? I try to grapple it off me. All right. Go ahead and make strength and brawl again. Uh, and Hermes, what is your? Uh, this respectable lady is still within you know, talking distance, huh? Yes, she has. She's like walking towards the church, and she hasn't quite passed you yet. I'll just ask, okay, who the hell are you guys anyway? Alright. So that is your alt's turn. Um, so, Garrett, you rush to the corner of the room, smacking against several of the bodies, masquerading as curtains on the wall. You turn around, and draw your gun. Um, Ryder, you're waiting. Mike, you say this as you try to rip the thing off of you. I take it you spent willpower? Uh, yes, I did. I got All four right, successes. Off. Yeah, you I did. Managed to tear the thing off of you, and it's just kind of biting fiercely at the air. And as it does, it's still puking blood everywhere. Go ahead and make a rouse check with the amount of blood that it's spewing out to see if you get hungrier. So, this whole time it's been vomiting blood, and now the scent is starting to get overwhelming. The blood in the room is kind of old and coagulated, so that's easier to resist. But this fresher, disgusting blood has now gotten to the point to where it is distracting you as well. So you gain a hunger. Um, Alright. The bespectacled woman walks, saunters more, and says, We tried to play it nice, and now that you're getting absolutely destroyed, you want to play nice? Typical. Hey, we didn't know what the hell was going on. We gave you three warnings. She reaches out towards you, Hermes. And I'm going... You you already had your chance to make an action. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I need you to make a roll for me. And what is this roll? I am if picking it, it up. If it's physical, it's probably not going to be good. Give me stamina plus composure. Oh, uh, willpower one. All right, mark off point of willpower and reroll one. Just hit the willpower reroll and type in one. The reroll below the roll, or...? No, don't do that. Go ah, to your sheet where it says I see it. power reroll. There we go. Eight successes on their part. Holy shit, they're rolling so well. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, here's what happens. As they reach... As she, as she reaches out to you, you can feel the... Vitae within you, that substance that almost controls but also animates you, being snuffed out. Your hunger intensifies. You. Would I know you? Yeah. Recognize this kindred power. Yeah, I can do that too. But you get hungrier. She walks by into the church. Past That's you. That's just right. mean. Right. As you turn, you're watching the bespectacled figure turn into the church. You turn around, begin to sprint, but in that moment, 
out of the shadows steps another figure, and they glare at you. I need you to make a roll as well. Uh, a roll of what? Give me one second. I, I feel like this vampire campaign, uh, Ryder is going to be the one that gets constantly beat up. Give me wits plus composure. Oh my god, critical success. <laughs> oh, wow. Hello everyone, welcome back. Apparently my three months of respite gave me magical dice powers. Oh my Kodolski! <laughs> um, so that's a critical success, so that's one, two, three, four, six successes on their part. Ryder. As you look up and begin to sprint away, your eyes meet this other figure, and your entire body is rendered immobile as you just roll over on your back looking up at this figure and you cannot do what you wanted to do back in the basement the leathered figure leaps off the stairs and is going to straight up like scissor kick you in the chest or at least try to Mike and since you already used your action this turn to attack the thing give me dex plus athletics at minus one Okay. Alright. Well, as this figure leaps off the stairs, one of the stairs cracks from the force of their leap. They come accelerating at you with rapid speed, Mike, as their heavy boots smash into your sternum. If you weren't made of such stern stuff, no pun intended, you're pretty certain that your entire ribcage would have just broken from the force of that, as not only do they kick you, but they also send you flying across the room as you impact the wall with a heavy thud. This is definitely a display of supernatural power, but more than just supernatural power. In fact, you recognize this augmentation as you are starting to learn how to do this, but you only know how to make yourself do this to mortals. In other words, you recognize a fellow potence user when you see one. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, and they had one, two, three, four, five successes to your three. And they add potence, half potence to that attack. So that makes it five. So you take three points of superficial damage from the kick and the impact into the wall. Okay, I now have my first X. This is going lovely. You have aggravated damage now? Yes, I do. Okay, well in that case, when the kick hits you, you can actually feel some of your sternum breaking. And as you hit the wall, you can feel part of the back of your skull cracking as well. As there's actually a slight dent in the wall from where you were kicked, from the force of it. So, starting back from the top. Garrett, what is your intention? Uh... So, since I had my firearm ready, uh, that head is still in there, right? The head creature? Yeah, it's still yeah. munching on Mike's ankle. So... Wait, I thought I got uh, it off me, then she kicked me. Oh yeah, that's right. No, actually, Mike has gone flying across the room. He's next to you now, and the head creature is in the middle of the room. By the way, go uh, ahead and give me a rouse check, Garrett, as... The fresh scent of blood is getting quite overpowering in this room. And you get hungrier. Okay. Oh, uh, this is worth the idea. I look at her and say, we need to take out this head because everyone is being controlled by it. The blood is making them do crazy things. It's making me, and I turn and try to shoot at creature and hopefully that might change things up all right you shoot at the creature go ahead and give me composure plus firearms well don't do it yet but you're going to roll that um yeah. i think writer is next so writer your body is completely unresponsive 
You can either stay like this, or you can burn a point of willpower to force your way out of this paralysis. This new figure is looming over me, right? Correct. How big are they? Well, let me give you a description since you're currently the only one who can see her. You see a dark-skinned figure with dreadlocks, an athletic build, and dimly glowing emerald eyes standing over you. Adorning her lips is a singular golden streak, like some kind of marking. And she also has a nose ring. The tautness of the muscles in your body indicate to you that she is no stranger to physical activity prior to becoming like she is. Do I have control over my speech? If you spend a point of willpower, you can. Otherwise, you will basically sit here paralyzed for this round. I spend a point. All right. So you exert yourself. You can feel this power suppressing every movement you want to make. But with that sheer exertion, you barely break free. And uh, I keep myself lying on the ground. I put my palms up and I say, Okay, I recognize a losing battle when I see one. And then I, I, just, I just remain there. All right. Um, who's next? Uh, Mike. I believe it's me. Attention? Okay. After hearing what Garrett said, I'm gonna go along with the "it's making me do crazy things." I'm gonna try and throw her in a full Nelson. She's across the room at the moment. So you're gonna try to run across the room and just kind of tackle her. Uh, yeah, pretty much. All right. Hermes. Still on the ground, just having your Vitae snuffed out a little bit. What is your intention? Uh, I can see uh, that Ryder's on the ground and being yeah, about to be attacked again. Kind of recover from having the blood snuffed out from within you. You look over, and now out of, out of nowhere, there's this other athletic figure that seems to have just stopped Ryder in his tracks and he's just kind of rolling, rolled over on his back like a defeated possum and he says what he said. I'm not sure that they're gonna... Ugh. Let us yield, Ryder! Hearing that, I look at the figure above me and I say, well, if you're going to kill me or your friends are, make sure I'm dead dead. Yeah, and I'm gonna at least get up and uh, start getting myself comfortable, but I'm not going to attack them just yet. All right. Well, right or, or I mean, uh, I I plus firearms. Roll. Wait, what? Garrett, make a composure plus firearms. Okay, Mike, strength and brawl. The figure, this leathered figure, is going to... As you rush for them, at first they look like they're just going to take it head on and try to just absolutely pulverize you with a punch. But seeing the aggression on your face, they quickly change their strategy and try to almost neo-dodge out of your... Um, tackle attempt. Ooh, unfortunately for them, that is only four successes on their part, even after spending willpower. Alright, so, messy critical. Hmm, what fun things can we do here? So, Mike, you wanted mm -hmm. to act a little bit crazy to try to sell this yeah. performance of 
carrots. However, this is a very strong opponent, and the fighter in you is elated by this challenge. You thought the storm was going to be that challenge for you, but you destroyed her easily. This foe, however, promises to do what the storm could not, and you find yourself needing to prove that the storm wasn't just a fluke, that you are stronger than you were before. So as you grab this figure, you not only grab them, but you end up throwing them completely up the stairs and into the wall. And for the next action that you take from the next round, mm -hmm. the final round, you have to prove your superiority. Okay, so they're at the top of the stairs now? Yes. Um, so that was Garrett. What did you roll on your composure? Oh, you rolled three. Okay. Um, Ryder's not doing anything. Hermes isn't doing anything. All right. So that shot, you managed to hit the crawling creature square in the side of its fleshy, monstrous head space thing. And strangely enough, there's actually brain matter in there that goes spraying across the back of this wall. It stumbles backwards, choking and spitting more blood, and collapses backwards like a turtle washed ashore on its back. Stubby arms, flailing, constantly spewing forth blood like a fountain, until eventually it stops twitching and the blood just dribbles out of its mouth. Um, so... New round, starting from the top. Intentions. Um, I am going with my story and uh, simply yell. Nah, I'm just not gonna yell. I'm just gonna hope that she listened and fire the head. So the head has stopped moving, by the way, and it's just, like just gurgling up oh. a minor amount okay, of blood so at this point. Then I simply yell out to her, quickly, knock out the others. I don't know if they can control it. Alright, make manipulation plus deception at minus two. So pretty much just, just don't add your bonus to the roll. But don't roll it yet. Ryder? Yeah. And what's your intention? This person, after I just said that, uh, what what are they doing? They haven't done anything yet, but you're gonna have to act or take whatever's coming your way. Uh, this person, do they seem like they're just gonna just watch over me, or are they gonna like pound me to the ground? I'll tell you this. They did just have fists before, but now all of a sudden, large. About six inch long claws protrude out of their fingers. Oh, okay. Uh, from the ground, I'm gonna try to like kick this person as far away as I can with like my my soaring leap legs. Okay. It's not quite how that power works. It's more for getting away. It's not something you channel into kicking other people. Oh, okay. Um, then. There is specifically a second level potence power that will do what I think you're trying to do. But that's why I'm not going to allow it I to see. apply. Because it's a second level power. In that case, I'm gonna get up. Uh, will that take all my turn or? No, you can get up and do something. Okay, then I'm gonna... Uh, what's that thing you do when you boost yourself with blood Plus again? Sir. Yeah, I'm gonna blood surge and, like, uh, tase the living shit out of this guy. Alright, so first make a rouse check to see if you get hungrier from the blood surge. And then roll strength and... Actually, we'll say dexterity and melee, since you're gonna try to stab her with a taser before she apparently mutilates you with claws. So you get hungrier, but you still get the bonus two dice. But don't roll that yet. Mike, you have to prove your superiority. Um, is it p 
impossible to get to the top of the stairs and do a flying elbow at her and yelling. Or actually, before I say what I'm gonna say, can I do that? Can I get to the top of the stairs and do a flying elbow? Absolutely. Okay. I'm gonna look at her and be like, "You thought you were a superior fighter. You came and take me down when I'm injured, you fucking bitch." And I'm gonna jump at her and hit her with an elbow. I'm gonna blood surge too. All right. So make the rouse check, and then you'll roll strength and brawl, and add two to it. Um, but don't roll that yet. Hermes, okay. Final person. Oh fuck. I'm going to use a uh, scorpion's touch, which is uh, on the late on the lady right above uh, Ryder. All right, so you're gonna get up and run over and spit on her. Pretty much. All right, make that roll. I'm pretty sure that requires a rouse check. Rouse check, and da, 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 da. all right. So neither you nor Mike got hungry. And Yay! So go ahead. I ain't got the munchies. Say again. I said, go ahead and make your roll for that. Everyone make the rolls I told you to make, and let me know your successes, as you're all going to be rolling at once. Uh, there is no deception, so I should I do persuasion? There should be. Whew. Oh, I'm sorry. Three, you seven successes. It's subterfuge, not deception. Subterfuge. Okay. And minus two? Uh, no, since you were gonna add bonus dice, just don't add the bonus. Oh. Alright, so everyone, starting with Garrett. Oh, uh, why did it just. That shouldn't be, right? Just roll yeah. um, subterfuge and then roll manipulation. Alright, there we go. Okay. So three successes for you. Um, Mike, how many do you get? Uh, seven. Seven, all right. Um, let's see. Ryder was trying to basically kick this person. How many did you get? Uh, I was trying to tase him. Right, you're sorry, you're trying to tase them. How many successes did you roll? Two for the taser. Oof. Alright, well, I have bad news for you, Ryder. The person with the claws. She rushes in. As you go to tase her, she vaults over you like a professional gymnast and turns around slash slash across your back. As that is one, two, three, four, five successes to your three, but plus two from the claws. So that's seven minus three is four, and it is not halved. So you take four points of damage. Yeah, I'm full on just stupor. You're in torpor? Uh, torpor, yeah. Alright, so you're filled up on aggravated damage as the slashes tear through your jacket, your undead skin. Ryder collapses unconscious on the ground. And at that point, before you can even realize what's happening, Hermes, you have rolled up and you're preparing to spit on her. How many did you roll? Three, the beast. Three, um... I don't think the beast matters because you didn't fail. You didn't roll any tens either. Mm -hmm. She rolled one, two, three. Three successes. However, Ty goes to the aggressor. So, how much damage do you deal with this ability? Uh, let me see. It's aggravated to mortal, but isn't it margin to kindred? Yeah, it's uh, superficial. Okay, so it's one damage. Yeah. Does it say that it's not halved? It is not halved. Okay, so she still takes that one damage. Alright, so you can hear the undead flesh of her arm sizzling ever so slightly as you just barely get a little bit on her. Um... The bespectacled figure has now walked into the room and sees you leaping out of the stairwell, Mike. Mm hmm. And. She is going to attempt to tackle you in midair. I'm going to give her a minus two dice penalty to this. 
because you are bigger than her, and it's hard to tackle someone out of the air. So Mike, go ahead and just roll me Stamina plus Resolve. Uh, Stamina Resolve? Yeah. Wow, <laughs> these willpower rerolls are on point tonight. Two successes. I'm, I'm a willpower reroll that. Fuck it. Uh, you, you can't because you're. Oh, never mind. I can't. Is a success. If she, if she messes up my fucking seven to this other person, I'm gonna be big salty. <laughs> so, here's what happens. She rolled with willpower. One, two, three, four successes. You are a big beefy boy flying through the air. Oh wait, take off one, I forgot. So three successes. All right, so here's what happens. Effectively, as she leaps into the air and, and kind of tries to wrangle you and foil your plans, she takes off one success from your roll. But the figure, the leather jacketed figure, is going to, as you fly through the air, um, vault onto her back, vault onto their back, I mean, and then thrust their feet at an angle upwards, essentially kicking you with a glance on the chin with their undead enhanced kick. Oh, only five successes for them. So luckily, you still have six after the minus one success. So, as you leap towards this person, they, um, they spring their feet upwards. It glances off of your chin. You can feel the vertebrae in your neck cracking and twisting under the supernatural force here, but you power through it as this other person is tackled onto you and you just drive your elbow into this figure's face as they take one point of superficial damage and you smack their head against the wall and then the force of the other person you kind of tumble and they roll over you and she rolls over you and you guys are in a tangle um Garrett I'm not really sure what happened with your end but no one seems to be paying attention so as you are busy being tangled up with this bespectacled woman, the leather jacketed figure rushes down the stairs, picks up the unconscious kindred, and says, Come on! Clarice, we've got her! We've got to go! And very quickly sprints towards the door. Mike, give mm -hmm. me a wits and awareness roll at minus one. As you are wrestling with this bespectacled person, her glasses kind of get shoved slightly off her face, and her hands are just flying everywhere. She is trying to push you down and push off of you. Oh yeah, no success, wits and awareness. Oh no. And that's a bestial failure. <laughs> yeah. I'm not letting this one go. This bitch ruined my fight. That's a bestial failure. Oh boy. So, Mike. Mm hmm. Let's revisit that esoteric clan compulsion of yours. Mm hmm. You are of a particular breed of kindred who, shall we say, have to YOLO on occasion. And yep. you were just about to prove your superiority before this glasses bitch came along and made you mess up ever so slightly. Whatever you do, in response to your beautiful elbow being messed up, it's got to be big and you got to go hard. Um, yeah, so she's like wrangling on the ground. She extricates herself from you and begins to stand up to walk away. And um, Hermes, Ryder is still unconscious. Ryder's not moving on the ground, but 
the athletic figure next to you just kind of squats down brushes Ryder's hair with her claws and says hush child you will be welcomed with open arms into Seth's embrace soon enough and she picks oh, Ryder what I over her shoulder and as the other figure the leather jacketed figure comes sprinting out um she's like let's go let's go and the athletic figure before you says package acquired rendezvous at the drop point and then you watch as the earth itself seems to swallow up this gymnast leaving her and Ryder no longer in your sight Oh no 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 not good not good not good Mike you can see this glasses woman running away from you their whole group seems to be fleeing Mhm what are you doing So does everybody know what a power bomb is where you pick someone up over your head and slam them full force to the ground Mhm yes I want to try and be like, okay, I'm looking, but you really thought you could interrupt my fight and get away like that? No, 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 that's not how we're going to do this here. You're going to go through the floor, back into the fucking basement where you belong, you bitch. I'm going to try and pick her up and power slam her through the floor itself. All right, you're going to have to blood surge for that. I'm going to. He, right. I'm angry. So make the rest check. Okay, I'm in hunger three now. You hear an unfamiliar voice in your head. It feels like a distant memory, but you can't place it that says, Are you sure we're just going to slam her? Remember how good that hot lady tasted at Elysium the other night? She messed with our plans. Maybe we should see how good she tastes. As the beast begins whispering into your mind. How do you respond to that? Hmm. Uh, there'll be time for a snack later, but first she must learn her lesson. All right. Roll your strength and at your strength and roll, or athletics if that's better for you, and add your two dice. Five successes. Oh, I don't. Think she's got much of a chance. Yep, she rolled two successes. So, you catch up to this person, you pick her up, and what are you gonna do with her? Uh, literally roll out power bomb, just send her straight into the floor. All right. You do exactly that as you tackle her, roll out, power bomb her. The floor gives way under the both of you as you both collapse into the hallway outside of the area. Uh, sorry, you fall into another storage chamber. You can see in the back there seems to be some sort of pool here. Like this is the underneath where the baptismal is. She <laughs> hits the ground with a heavy thud, <coughs> lets out a cough as impact cracks a couple of bones the rest of you it's hard for you to hear prior to this given the gunshots given the panic that you might have been feeling but there are very loud sirens and they don't sound that far away so for everyone except for Mike what are you doing Oh boy. Um So there was basically one entrance and exit out of uh the church. Yeah, you're outside. Oh, okay. Do I see cop cars yet? Uh no, but you can see sirens on the horizon. <laughs> All right, I'll step in and yell. Cops coming! I, uh... Ryder got taken. So you all don't have much time. I'm going to. Garrett, 
what are you doing? You hear him? Let me shout this. I'm running towards him. Alright, so you're running up the stairs, Mike. You said I didn't hear the sirens, right? Correct. Oh, oh no, she still has to pay. So, she's on the ground, right? Correct. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just going to start throwing elbow strikes into her side. Alright. As she looks at you, you've broken one lens of her glasses, and she says, You will let me go this instant. You need to make a roll for me. Okay. I need to find this roll real quick. You need to make intelligence plus resolve. Uh, four. She also rolled four. Ty goes to the attacker, as it were, and she's attacking you with mental powers. You want to hurt her, but at the same time, all of a sudden, you want to let her go. You're not sure why, but it seems like the right thing to do. And you find yourself simply standing by. She picks herself up, moans a little bit in pain, leaps upwards out of the pit that you've created, and begins walking out the door. Garrett, by the time you get up to the stairwell, you get out of the basement, you see this figure with the red blazer leaving the church, and you did hear what Hermes said. Are you planning on running out the door? I see the figure, right? You barely see them. You see like their coattail as they sprint out the door. As uh, she is heading towards the door, I want to shadow cast... The where the door is and block it with a shadow. Uh, so remember I said you're seeing her coattail. So like she's already mostly out of the door by the time you see her. Oh, then I'm running to her. Because she's our only lead at this point. Ow, I just smacked myself in the head with my headphones because I was trying to plug them in. That hurt a lot. <laughs> Oh no. Um, Alright. So I was mildly concussed just now, but I believe you said you were running after her. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you're sprinting across the way. You have to leap over this huge hole in the floor that presumably someone that you know made. Um, Garrett, you see her sprinting out the door. I'm not Garrett. Um, Hermes, you see her sprinting out the door. You see the sirens. They're getting closer. They're getting much louder. What are you doing? I'm going to be... Walking, um, walking down the street, trying to be as nonchalant as possible. All right, so you've already left the church after you gave this warning. Yeah. All right, so you are walking down the street, trying to be inconspicuous. So. Yep. Cop cars draw ever closer as you run out the door, Garrett. You can tell, you have precious few moments to escape. The figure is running, and for now, she's out in the open. It is dark, but this might be the only chance you have at doing something to keep her from escaping. Or, you can flee and not risk whatever might be coming. What will you do? I I'm gonna shadow cast and have my shadow follow her while I run towards her and try to capture her. Go ahead and click on that ability for me. Let's see what it does. It's been a while. 
Oh god, mm. this long. His power draws upon the darkness to project a supernatural shadow. The shadow mimics the movement and shape of you, the user, but you can do stuff to it. Blah blah blah. Uh, vampire conjures a supernatural shadow. As long as the power is active, the shadow can't be removed except sunlight. Anyone witnessing you will have to make a witness awareness to see if they recognize the supernatural. You can direct your shadow, elongating or distorting, but not detaching it. Okay. So, you can kind of... The shadow is kind of behind you. You can direct it to be in front of you, and as you're running along, it will continue to be in front of you, which is weird. Um, but... You can't, like, spawn it at a certain point and have the shadow trail oh. somewhere else. And also, don't take this as me discouraging you. This is me just making sure you remember what we said at the beginning of the session, that these street corners are not a safe place to be what you are. So very quickly, I need to decision. I run. All right, so you're sprinting after into the night. At this point, Mike, you regain control of yourself. The compel has worn off. You now hear the sirens, and they are uncomfortably close. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and run away, then. Okay. Are you climbing out of the hole and then trying to disappear into the streets? Uh, yeah, well, yes. Yes, I'm just going to go for that. All right. Would you like to use Unseen Passage? Uh, given the warning about using my powers is a bad idea, uh, no. Keep in mind, you're in a building no one can see you currently, so if you use it there, you think... If I use it there, see. technically, I would just look like a normal person in public, right? No, technically no one would even recognize you in public. Well, like, on like, a, uh, so I mean like if there are like, uh, street cameras or something, I just look like a normal person walking. Correct, as long as you look like a normal person walking. Oh, okay, then yeah. Uh, I'm going to use it inside. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, yeah, I'm going to use Unseen Passage. That is one rouse check. Correct. All right, you do not get hungrier, but you call upon this low-level mesmerism, and although you are still perfectly solid, you've used this before. People will subconsciously accommodate your lack of presence. And so you, I presume, begin sprinting into the night. You do see... I should say, both Hermes and uh, Garrett and Mike. You see Turbo's limousine speeding up in the parking lot where you were dropped off. You run for it and you really book it. You might be able to make it there before the cops descend upon you. Uh, yeah, I'll go for that. I like my chances. I'm pretty fast. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. Garrett? To the car? Or after the girl? To the car. To the car. You're going to let her go. Yep. All right. By the way, just to be clear, like you could chase her away from here and not get caught by the cops. But as far as like being really far away from here in time, the limousine would be your best option. But you will not automatically be caught by the cops if you chase her. So I want to make sure you're not confused about that. I'm not looking going to health anyways, uh, so... Alright. So, you begin sprinting after her, change your mind, and book it. You begin piling in to Turbo's cush, an extravagant limousine. He looks around, Hey, we're missing one, where is he? Fuck! Hit it, hit it, hit it! And the car accelerates rapidly in reverse, peels out of the parking lot, begins driving away. And it is at that moment. It is at that moment. That you are all nearly thrown out of your seats by the deafening roar of an explosion. There's a bright light in the background behind you. As you can see, conflagration consuming the church's remains and that's where we're going to take a break hey when that happens i say hey remember that plan 
They did it. All right. Wait, so Mike sees a giant ball of fire? We'll, we'll get back to that, don't worry. Okay. A dramatic pause. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for the break. This, I just no, wanted to make sure. How could go worse? Yeah. <laughs> uh, me slamming Turbo's head through his own limousine? Fuck! <laughs> what well, at least that probably killed the poacher? Wow. I was not expecting them all to roll critical successes. That was crazy. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm looking a little rough. Yeah. So. Oh, no. What a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm still moving. I'm not captured, so I mean, yeah. I love that, Kyler. <laughs> that was so good, Kyler. Don't worry. Let me go grab my boomstick. I'll come save you. Do you want a five-minute or ten-minute break? Ten minutes. I need help. Right. I'll be right back, peeps.
Nate. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. All right, we're all here. Let us turn our attention now to another conflict going on within the city. Another kindred who may or may not also be having a wonderful night. By the way, out of character real quick, I apologize that my mic sucks. I lost the mount thing for my microphone, so I had to order a new one, and it hasn't come in yet. So that's why I'm using a headset mic, and it probably sounds like shit, and I'm sorry. Charlotte lies on the ground, having just been bashed hard over the head with a metallic object. The cold, the concrete is cold, like death, despite the warm August air outside. And from the crack in the cement where your right hand is, Charlotte, you swear you can feel frosty air escaping. And that's when that unwelcome voice says, Oh, looks like it's one of them. Guess we got lucky. I'm gonna try and scramble out of the way and get out of the reach of this guy. All right. So are, are you going to move around to the front of the bound figure, or are you moving away from the bound figure? Um, where's he in relation? Because I had just walked in and I was headed towards her. You had just put your hand on the back of the chair where she was bound when you got clobbered over the head. So okay, yeah, I'll ground, put her. You. I'll put her in between the two of us. All right. You scramble upwards and rush around to the side, to the front of this bound figure, and you notice too late that as you do, the bindings around her wrist fall off, and she actually stands as you turn. Give me a dexterity and athletics roll. Hold on, it's not pulling like I should. It seems like it's your sheet lately. Two successes. Difficulty was three. So, as you scramble around trying to interpose the bound woman between you and other assailant. You're a little bit too slow on the uptake to step out of the way from the figure standing up from the chair, and she jabs her fist into your stomach, but it's not knuckles that hit you. It's sharp prongs of some kind of object that jolts you with electricity. And the way this works mechanically, you don't take any damage, but because you failed by one, you are unable to do anything for one round. Okay. Due to the shock of the taser. So with the woman who stands up, did I notice, is she taller than me, smaller than me, same size, like before she jammed it into my gut? Now that you are incapacitated, you have time to reflect on that. We'll get back to that in just a second as immediately after you collapse onto the ground for the second time this evening, you're only able to see the lower half of the woman who was bound to the chair. She's clad in black leather boots, black leggings, and a black leather jacket featuring studded wrists. And she turns and speaks to the figure behind. Wow. There's an edge to her voice, although it's definitely feminine sounding. That played out as perfectly as a fire screaming riff on a guitar solo. The gruff man replies. Sorry, it's one of them, though. I'm not sure if you can study them like normal people. And now, that female figure approaches you, 
and squats down and gently lifts your head up so you can get a full view of her body and process those thoughts you had in between the dash and the sparks. You see that she wears a black t-shirt with a massive white skull on it. She even has a spiked collar around her neck. And her dark brown, overly straightened hair, incredibly pale skin, and very liberal application of eyeliner, eyeshadow, and mascara clenches the whole death doll slash emo band chick vibes that she seems to be going for. And she coos at you. It's okay. You can't hear it yet, but I'll make your soul sing. Her lips curl upwards in what's supposed to be a smile, but the fangs, the predatory glee corrupting her human features. You recognize the signs of a fellow beast of the night. And it's as you are helpless looking at this person that another realization dawns on you with increasing horror. You know this girl. You taught this girl a few semesters ago. I will whisper you her name. I know it's been like three months, but hopefully that name sounds familiar. Um, I'm gonna have to look back. It's not familiar, so I'll have to just look at my notes real quick. <laughs> All right. It's at this point that you hear an uncertain voice bleeding from outside beyond the rotted doors to this warehouse. Uh, Dr. Jones? That voice. God damn it. Easily mistakable. Another student of yours. One that you visited with just a few hours ago, in fact. The woman standing before you snaps over to the sound of the voice. Take care of the problem. Can I scream run as loud as possible? <laughs> you begin trying to work your vocal cords as you're trying to regain the feeling of your muscles. Um, and you can hear the man starting to very quickly walk across the room. And it's at this point that you are able to move again. Okay, I'm going to scream run. I'm going to back the F up because, damn it, it's a kindred. Um... I want to put it as, okay, first of all, I don't know much of this room. You said most of it's dark except right where the chair was. Yeah, there's a flickering, like, industrial light, spotlight kind of thing just above this chair. Definitely meant to attract attention here. The rest of this place is pretty dark. Even the light pollution from above only illuminates some of the corners of the warehouse. It's a two-story warehouse. You did manage to spot some of the upper deck on your way in seems rather unremarkable, and as far as you can tell, most of this place is empty, but you also haven't really investigated very much. Okay, so I recognize a girl. I don't think I recognize the men, right? Correct. And at this point, you only see his back, which is more than you saw before. So, I understand that you're trying to scramble away and basically put as much distance between you and your former student, correct? Yeah, between me and the kindred, definitely. I, I, th I don't know if the other ones are kindred yet, but I know she is. All right, so while your former student is distracted by your current student emerging, rather unfortunately at the scene, you take that opportunity to just book it into the shadows. You hear your student's voice, the current student, say to some other figure, Get a shot of the inside. And another younger Damn it. male voice says, What? I'm not going into some gang den. Are you crazy? Once again, your current student says, Dr. Jones, are you in there? I'm going to scream again. Run, you fool. We got to help you. No, it's not safe. Now her voice is coming directly from the entryway. And you're certain that if the goth girl's gruff co-conspirator hadn't made it to the door yet, your current student and her associate have definitely seen the approaching threat. And the night air is filled with the terrified scream of a girl in her early 20s. Jesus. She screams, G get away from us! She's trying to sound commanding, but failing utterly to conceal her panic. She points 
to something that you can't quite make out. You see that red light? We're live broadcasting right now. If you do anything to us, the whole world's going to see it. God damn anything it. From you? Well, that makes it difficult, because obviously I can't be a kindred live broadcasting. Uh, and it's also... Ugh. Okay. So... They haven't entered, but they're right there at the door, and someone's approaching, and they're yelling at him. Correct. Okay. Point, What's Kindred doing? Door. Uh, she is watching the scene unfold. She has not looked at you since you left. Okay. Well, and um, you said this is a two-story warehouse. And Am I like in the middle of like just like an empty floor and like no pillars or like? Oh, there are several pillars. Yes, uh, you've passed okay. one of them, and in fact, you can see a rough outline of some huge machine right next to this pillar that you're presumably hiding behind. Okay. Do I see stairs anywhere? You can't see into the darkness, but you use where the shingles have fallen through the roof as a guide. You think you might know where stairs are across the room. Okay. Um, my goal is to keep my eye on the kindred because um, she's the most dangerous in my opinion right now. And um, keeping my eye on her, try to start making my way towards those stairs. Um, I'm going to pull up my phone and I'm going to send an email to Mike or not email, a text to Mike just with SOS. And that's it. <laughs> Because I texted him where I was headed you did. prior to. Alright, so you're going to try to text without looking. You're going to try to walk across a very dark warehouse while looking at someone else. While also trying to remain hidden, is that correct? Uh, no, she's not hidden. She's not trying to hide because she's just putting distance. So she's not trying to hide because I don't know if she can see me or not. So that's not even okay. a thing. Are you but she is... Quickly? No, she's walking, she's keeping her front facing the kindred, walking slowly, she'll pull out her phone, she'll have to look down occasionally to, like, text him, but she keeps, like, you know, that okay. quick glance back and forth, yeah. like... <laughs> Alright. Okay, yes. What I thought you were trying to do is basically watch the kindred text without looking while also sprinting across a dark warehouse, that's why I was slightly confused, but I understand now. All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, you are slowly making your way across the warehouse. You get two letters typed before you look from the kindred and glance just to see how your current student is doing. And that's when you realize that your current student and her associate are in more danger as the gruff man who attacked you now has a knife to her neck and her left arm is being wrenched very painfully behind her back, completely restraining her. The cameraman you can see is trembling terribly. And likely whatever he's recording is indistinct, horribly blurry, and probably not going to be much to see. What do you okay. hear that gruff voice say? Alright. You are either going to stand down and stop moving, or we kill this girl. Fucking shit. Okay, um... How far are they from me at this point? Oh, they're a good, like, 40 to 60 feet away from you. Uh, the kindred is about 20 feet. But it's, uh, she's like in a line to you, and they're in like a diagonal line from you, if that makes sense. Okay, and is there anything in between us, or is it just open space? Currently it's just open space, but you do see that there are some more pillars that you were on your way to before he shouted at you. Okay. Um... You said I got two letters in. I'm going to just put S in, send real quick, put my phone away, lift my hands up, and say, let's let's talk. <laughs> the kindred now turns her attention to you. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. You know, I was really never a fan of talking. Professor. Curious that you're the one who showed up here, but you always seemed like a troubled soul, so perhaps it's the will of Cain that we have been reunited in this way. 
Because I think your soul needs to be unburdened. I think you could use a song. Okay, she's talking crazy. So, um, I'm going to just with my hands up still. Uh, okay, before you do that, let me just tell you about one other feature of your environment that you are becoming aware of. The concrete underneath your feet. It is late August, kind of muggy outside, but the concrete is growing even colder, even as you yet walk on it. You can actually start to see permafrost air rising from the crack behind the chair where you once were at this point. And go ahead. Interesting. Um... I, I don't think we technically have souls, do we? Interesting. I think it's a matter of debate, maybe. I'm not sure. That doesn't mean that we can't touch souls with our music. Does music make any sense to me? Like, is, do I know of any clans that are, like, musically inclined? Or is this I just mean, nonsense? Not really. I mean, okay. Toriador are artists, so any kind of art they're kind of into, but this doesn't really seem Toriadorish she does, to Yeah, you. she doesn't seem Toriadorish to me. Um, okay. So, uh, she's gonna, like, with my hands up, so, like, in a circle. So, I know what's her name's like 20 feet from me, but so not getting any closer to her, but edging my way closer towards the dude. Um, As you I, begin creeping your way forward, you hear your current student let out a slight yelp as the gruff voice says, You think I'm that stupid? You better stay over there. Amber, you. Damn fool, I told you to stay. <laughs> no, you said I shouldn't come here alone, so I brought back up plus the entire world. <sighs> idiot, idiot, idiot. Okay, um... At this point, Amber kind of scrambles. She's like, wait, wait, wait. Surely there's got to be something we can help you with. Um, uh, if you let us both go, I'm sure that our combined power, our combined might, our combined minds, we can get you whatever it is that you want. And the guy holding the knife to her neck just scoffs. Puh, and what use could a girl like you be? I, I found you, didn't I? You were all out here in this hideout in the middle of nowhere, and I dug you up. So that's got to count for something. If, if, if there's some sort of scoop you need, or if you need some information dug up, I'm your girl. And, and Dr. Jones, she helps me a lot too. And I'm sure together, we can find any information you need. What do you do, Charlotte? I'll say, um, I am extremely knowledgeable. Why don't we let the girl go, and I'm sure we can work out a deal. You know how we like deals, right, Val? Sal smiles, and she looks at you. She says, Huh. I am sorry. Well, that's what I've been doing this entire time. I suppose you're not accustomed to hearing the soul song of our people. Um, but now that you're all here, let me ask you, Professor, and please, don't insult my intelligence anymore by trying to lie to me. Is this apparent student of yours as good as she says she is? She's fairly crafty and ambitious, so I would say yes. And is her safety worth making a deal for? <sighs> yes, it would be worth making a deal for. Oh, beautiful. I can hear the notes of progress resounding already in these halls. So let us strike an accord here. You see, there is 
has a certain trade that my associate and I are looking to get into. And if my sources seem true, you could actually help us with that. So I think we've stumbled onto a beautiful melody of cooperation here. You deliver us what we want, and we will let you and your two students, or at least your student and her associate, to walk away from here. I'll even add in unarmed. Wouldn't want to ruin her instrument. And this item you want me to procure being... The gruff man wrenches Amber's arm a little tighter. She's ah, not really an item. Like she said, we're trying to get in on a trade. It's our understanding that there's a rather mm, rich supply, specifically, of what your kind needs, to put it circumspectly, and he looks at the shaking camera. Uh Uh-huh, and you want in on this. Zell, the goth chick, twirls, not really twirls, but she kind of flips back her hair like a emo rock guitarist would in the middle of a heavy riff. And she says, oh, not in so much. We would kind of like to procure some samples for ourselves and see if it's worth investing in. If you catch my drift. Okay. (laughs) Then... Where do we go from here? You let me go to get you your samples? um, And they stay here? Or do I have the ability to have, like, one come with me? Oh, I don't think you're going to be able to procure it by yourself. Unfortunately, uh, the particular kindred spirits involved produce rather discordant sounds. I think you are going to have to have a, a backstage pass, as it were to get in on this concert. You see, there's a special trade in this city, dealing in exquisite, incredibly rich and refined and specially chosen treats of the sustenance we most desire. In fact, we're fairly certain it's somewhere, perhaps within this neighborhood. We believe an associate of yours might have some insight connections to share might know their creative process so we let the both of you go this seems like a rather difficult endeavor so we will give you two nights to find some way to bring back a car full of samples to this location if you do not we will find her and the next time you hear from her you will have to question what kind of music you actually enjoy All right, two nights. See, isn't it beautiful when musicians collaborate to compose the perfect chorus? There was no need for 
harsh trumpets or heavy percussion, we settled this with the mellifluous chimes and woodwind ensemble, appropriate to accomplished musicians such as myself. Mm. In that case, I'm going to go ahead and like step closer um, over to Amber. All right. And at this point, the man just kind of pushes her forward, lets go of her. The guy holding the camera practically drops it and it busts on the ground from the pent up uh, scaredness. And she sprints over to you. And she's like, All right, we got a big scoop. I just want to so bad slap her, but I will <laughs> instead take her hand, uh, just give a slight nod of the head to Val and look at her uh, Amber's male associate and just jerk my head towards the door and I'm going to both shove them out there and I'm just ugh, I want to fail her in my class right now the, uh, a professor abusing their power um, the male associate of hers uh, is a little bit stocky appears to be uh, of Hispanic descent he has long black hair he's wearing a t-shirt and shorts and he looks down on the camera and he's like we can't just leave this this is school property this costs so much money I just, I don't even acknowledge the comment and I just take Amber and like grab her arm and I'm pulling her out the door. She's like, she shouts over her shoulder, come on Javier, we gotta go. And he's like, what, what? And you hear him scrambling with machinery. And she's like, don't you worry, professor. I've been digging up scoops on our missing friend. I'm sure I can find whatever the secret drug business is that they want. She <laughs> swear to Jesus. Ah! Uh, okay, um... I, I'm gonna just. How'd you get here? Uber. I mean, I'm metro. To you this place, of car. To no, mode of transportation. Oh. Well, we took a train a few blocks down, and then we made our way through back alleys to get here. Ugh. All right, I'm just gonna keep walking until we're a couple of blocks away. Um, I'm gonna check my phone to see if I even got anything from. Uh, Mike at all and at this point let us return to the blaze of glory in which we left our other kindred we so, are so fucked we are so fucked the church behind you burns its doors fly open vomiting forth pitch black smoke into the somber night air the cross mounted on the roof swiftly collapses into the building leaving a gaping wound in its center in this moment this Baptist church looks less like a place of salvation and more like the gates to perdition itself. I need you all to roll a terror frenzy check as fire is one of the very few things that will absolutely kill a kindred. The difficulty is two. Fucking! Oh no. <laughs> all right. Oh, I feel bad for all of you. So, Hermes and Mike, you all are overcome with Rutschrick, the red fear, as that, especially you, Mike, as the fire bursts forth behind you, blinding you in its inferno. You have to get away from here. This vehicle is not moving fast enough. Now, I will remind you both, you can expend one point of willpower to control yourself for a single action, which may help you avoid potentially disastrous consequences, or you can let the frenzy out. If you do, he will severely damage Turbo's car. Yeah, I'm using a willpower. I'm going to use a willpower also. Alright, so mark that off. You feel the beast shrieking and wailing inside of you, threatening to tear you apart. You know you're going to flee, but you have a single moment to act with reason. I'm going to put my seatbelt on. <laughs> Can I knock myself out? Is that even possible? <clears throat> How bad are you looking? 
Well, uh, no, because uh, you're going to go into a frenzy, a terror frenzy, um, so you won't be able to knock yourself out. You can try to minimize the damage to Turbo's car, though. Minimize the damage to Turbo's car. Okay, I have an idea. So, it's a limousine, right? Correct. It's a very fancy plush leather back here. Um, does it come- does it have like one of those bars with the ice chests? It does. There are also doors- several doors all along the back here. You could easily it, throw yourself out of one if you wanted to. Yeah, I'm just gonna look- I, I'll be back later! Don't wanna destroy your shit! I'm gonna eat myself out the window. Okay. You roll down the window and just try to get yeah. yourself out of it. No, I could totally see him doing like the the roof. <laughs> oh, jumping out of the sunroof. Yeah. Let's go with that. Oh wait, is there a sunroof? Yes. Yeah, I just do that. I just jump straight through it. All right. And Garrett, or her that's fucking so ridiculous. On the seat belt. I'm putting on the seatbelt in an attempt to calm myself down, like grabbing the uh, the the belt. All right. So here's how this plays out. Garrett, this is all happening as soon as you see the church blow up. You hear Mike and Hermes hissing and growling. So you hear some sort of monster rising up within them. Mike looks like he's struggling really hard to get a hold of himself. He tears off the seatbelt, runs to the center of this back area, and just leaps through, breaking the sunroof, and peels out onto the night highway you hear him shrieking and wailing as he's just sprinting through the streets trying to avoid this fire Hermes on the other hand has a moment of trepidatious calm as he clicks the seatbelt and then the fury overcomes him he's wailing he's screaming he tears out the seatbelt tearing out chunks of the leather he's bashing at the car threatening to break off the doors as he's trying to get free trying to get out how do you respond Garrett? I open the door for him and let him out. <laughs> Alright, you open the door. You barely even release the lock on the door before he rolls out of it and rolls down, just goes leaping and screaming into the night. And now. Do I take damage? Yeah, both of you do. Mike, take one point of superficial. Um. Hermes, this part was speeding away. Go ahead and roll those four dice. 4d10. Once again, oh no! Luckily for you, you take one point of superficial damage from oh, thank rolling you. across the pavement at a high speed. So now it is only Garrett and Turbo in the backseat of this limousine. He's just like, "What the fuck?" All right, are you good? Can we talk? I'm good. All right. So, why don't we talk about what the heck is happening? I thought you were going in there to track down a poacher. I come back, shit's blowing up, and people are screaming through the streets in a bloody frenzy. There was a second team of kindred looking for the same poacher. I, I caught her name... Yeah, you caught one of them. The spectacled woman was named, um, I believe it was Somalia. No, it wasn't. It was Clarice. And I tell him Clarice was the only name I was able to get. Alright, so you describe this Clarice, what little you remember of her. I tell him the name. Mm. He shakes his head. Doesn't sound like anyone important, so guess I'll have to do some digging. What was in there that needed to be blown up? And I describe the uh, creature we fought. As well as the room? Mm hmm. Alright. And that's when you notice that Turbo's lamprey like eyes bulge out of the sunken recesses of his eye sockets from the tension mounting from the beast within as you describe the scene. 
His lavender skin chafes visibly, even on his exposed hands. He clears his throat. He tugs at his black argyle sweater, messes with his classy black jeans, and uncomfortably drums his talon-like fingers on his knees. Well, that's certainly going to be a problem. But, uh, we can deal with that later. Right. There wasn't anyone living or unliving in that church. Besides the poacher. Oh, you actually found the poacher. Oh, where are they? Why aren't they with you? Because the other group grabbed her before we could. Ah. And from what you could tell, did they seem like they had any connections to Oh, this? they most certainly did. And why do you say that? Because she... The... There was a person that attacked me. I described her because I didn't catch her name. Uh, fully attacked me and then was very adamant about me carrying that body out. What like she knew that person. Oh, so she didn't want you to have them. Exactly. Well, that's doubly unfortunate. I take it you don't know the poacher. I do not. I'm assuming you described her to him. Mm. He scratches his chin. Interesting, interesting. So, a known poacher, and you said poacher was in a frenzy. Did she seem like an old vampire? An old kindred. He doesn't say vampire. As far as you can tell, no. She just seemed like a yeah. kindred like you who had gone mad. As far as I can tell, no. Good, good. So that, that means we don't have an old vampire on the... An old kindred on the loose doing crazy things. But that leaves the question... Why would a trio of kindred have any interest in a poacher? Enough interest that they immediately became hostile towards you. The car spins around at this point. Um, you guys have run deep into the night, but as the car pulls up beside you, Turbo leaps out, just absolutely elbows you hard in the back of the head, both Mike and Hermes. <laughs> you unconscious and the frenzy to stop, he just kind of throws you back in the car. After a few minutes, you both wake up. You don't know really where you are, except for you're back in Turbo's limousine. He looks at you, and again his freaky lamprey-like face and mouth, with the <laughs> sharp <laughs> And Sorry, has... no offense. None taken. Considering I'm the one making sure you're still going to be alive tomorrow night. Oh, it's been a night. Anything that you can tell me about what happened? Also, what happened yes. Other... Ryder was taken. Taken. One of the one of the kindred. That we were, that were fighting us, knocked him out, threw him over her shoulder, said something about set, welcoming him, and then she just disappeared into the earth with him. Set. Do you know anything about set besides, you know, the Egyptian god? When you say she disappeared in the earth, what do you mean? Have you ever seen Never Ending Story 2? What? Never mind. It kinda like... Uh... Like sunk into the earth. And disappeared. And there wasn't a hole there already. 
Was there? There wasn't, no. She, it was like the no. earth just like opened its mouth and ate her. No. I have no idea what kind of ability that is. And set. Do you know anything about set? Apart from the myth that no one cares about, he... Used I care be, about it. Used to be the reason the Etra of the snakes. Asps, specifically. No, no, I mean, I mean the group of kindred, the snakes. Oh! Okay. So these must be the snakes. Been on the nose name for that, but... Well, that's not what they call themselves, but we all know what they are. They're calling themselves the Ministry nowadays. As if that's not more on the nose, but... They're supposed to be our allies. They recently were admitted into the Camarilla. Of course, not every clan joins the correct side. I'm sure you know. There are Tremere, there are Warlocks, there are Rats. Not with the Ivory Tower. But... It's concerning that... There are snakes... Unbound... In Chicago. And taking Kindred. Yes, most curious. Well... Anything from you, Mike? Mike, you, um, you feel your phone mm -hmm. vibrate a couple times. Uh, I might have some information. Let me check this really quick. I pull out my phone. There was a message from Charlotte earlier tonight. It's just mm -hmm. an address. You recognize this kind of message. It's, um, it's the kind of message you send to people when you think you might not be coming back. Well, I might have a lead. It could be related or not. I'm not entirely sure. And then you see the second message. S O S. Oh, that's not good. I think one of our acquaintances <sighs> is in trouble at this address. Yeah, you already told us they took one of yours. That's a real bummer. Wait, they took one? No, this is Charlotte. Who'd they take? Ah, oh, Charlotte? Jeez! <laughs> Fighter was apparently taken during the firefight. Wait, he was? Wait, what happened outside? Because I ended up fighting two inside and the head monster. Head monster? Oh, right. Yeah, that's, uh... That's not your ordinary kindred shit. Not yeah, really it, sure what that is. It was incredibly durable. It's supernatural. So. Uh... Yeah, um, whoever that was that came after us, they're very well trained. You didn't stand a chance, to be honest. Hey, I wasn't doing too bad. I was fighting two of them, and I kind of, and I almost won until that bitch used her mind powers. Oh, great, mind powers, too. And one of them might be a... No, if they're... One of them knows a bit of blood sorcery. Uh, well, you don't exactly learn blood sorcery unless you're a Tremere or you've got favors with the Tremere. So, you got a possibly Tremere or someone in cahoots with the Tremere. You've got a snake. And it's a little bit cliche, but the heavily leathered person kind of sounds like a Bruja, especially if she was able to throw Mike around. Uh, I, yeah, I've never been uh, beaten up like that in my entire life or unlife. I was incredibly impressed. They had potence far superior to mine. So what would a Tremere enthusiast, a Bruja, unless they're going against the trend and trying to throw us off, and a snake, be doing with a poacher? And not just anything with the poacher. Doing enough that they would literally fight to protect the poacher. Uh, I don't know, Turbo, but can I suggest we go to this address? Uh, one of our allies' acquaintances is very knowledgeable and would probably be better to answer this question or riddle than I would. Do you send anything back to Charlotte? 
Uh, Mike's too caught up in the fact that he was taken, so he probably wouldn't send anything immediately. Probably about another five five minutes or so of talking he'd send back. Are you good, question mark? Uh, keep in mind, the SOS came about ten minutes later, which was about 25 minutes ago from the time it is right now. So it was sent quite a while ago. But... Oh, for that time, for I'll message back. You good? So, Charlotte, you get a message back very late. That says, you good? I send back a rolling eyes emoji and um, a face palm emoji. Um, and then said, what do you not get about SOS? Mike? I'll respond back. Sorry, very preoccupied. Uh, Want to meet up? Um, I let him know. Uh, I got some... I let him know, yes, like, let's see, how long would it take me to get back these these hooligans back to campus? Probably a good 30 minutes. Okay. I say, meet in an hour, your place. <laughs> okay. So, you exchange stories, and you let, let Turbo know you don't need to go there, you're going to meet at this other place. So he decides uh, yep. to take you... Somewhere safe and out of the way, just in case. Precautions, you know. As you are getting ready to step outside the car, he says to you, I don't think any Camarilla would be trying to interfere with the acquisition and dispatching of a poacher, especially one potentially making headlines recently. So it sounds like there are Anarchs who have a vested interest in agitating the Camarilla. And if they were willing to protect a kindred of such debauchery as what you described, that girl, then I worry they may not be the sole conspirators behind recent events. As your sponsor, I must give you this advice as the night draws to a close, that you will very quickly need to decide to what lengths you are willing to go for the cause, especially when aggressors present themselves. If you intend to pursue this matter further, then I would encourage you to spend one last night with whoever or whatever you don't wish to leave behind. It's kindred. I know you must have some sort of obs obsession or unreasonable attachment somewhere. Tonight, they let you go. But there might not be an exit strategy the next time. So, see to those attachments if you don't want to have any regrets. He ushers you all out the doors. What time would it be? It's very late. You have just enough time to meet with Charlotte, and then you all need to get to your havens. You all step out of the limo. Turbo slams the door. And he says, <sighs> Of course, as your sponsor, I will do my best to make sure that the events of this night don't come back on you. But blowing up a church isn't exactly an easy thing to make go away. And to be completely to fair, sir, that wasn't us. are the squealing tires as the fancy limousine pull away. And Charlotte, if there's nothing else you really want to say to Amber and Javier, you see the limousine peeling off. Drop no, the only very clearly uh, these three off. No, the only thing I would have done is the entire way back, I would have been like full on like lecture mode. Like, what were you thinking? <laughs> like, I told you specifically. <laughs> And yeah, that would be, I would be the no fun, like, mom. All right. So a whole, like, 30 minutes of scolding later, uh, Amber rushes back to the graduate student apartments. And you see this very fancy limousine very clearly dropping off your three friends next to Mike's Haven. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to walk up. Um, 
Do they look like shit? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, yeah. There's barely flesh attached to one of my arms right now, and multiple broken bones. Yeah. Hey, Charlotte. That was your night. His arms was shit. Uh, well, you're forgiven, I guess. Uh, let's maybe inside if you don't mind. I mean, I know this is your your whole thing, so you know. Yeah, that's fine. I don't really care. I'm about to pass out. Charlotte, you notice that Ryder is conspicuously absent. Um, I'm gonna real quickly get him. Like, where's your? F we can field? talk inside. Uh, okay. So you enter in the abandoned funeral home. The metal door that I've seen somewhere, Mike opens, takes you into his haven, which two of you remember, you had quite the trip here last time. Are we going to get shot at? I took all the firing pins out of the guns, you won't get shot. Okay. You do see as you walk in what appears to be bloody scratch marks in the right wall that says you're next from your uh, oh yeah I forgot about that I think a van or a kindred from my past is coming back to kill me I don't know anymore or the friends that live here I honestly forgot about that that's not my concern right now you're just like a pile of troubles <laughs> yeah well this one's partially Ryder's fault too if it's who I think it is Speaking of, where is he? Did he just dump you guys, or? Uh, well, since I was I was too busy fighting in a church. Um, Hermes, why don't you explain what actually happened? Well, we found the poacher, knocked her out. Oh, I'll describe the poacher hey, since no, I was on. really close to her. Hold on, poacher. Oh yeah, you weren't there, so. You know the whole thing at the dorm where you have me go gather information? Yeah, yeah. Well, they caught me in 4K, and uh, our new associate, or our new sponsor, made it go away for a price that we had to help solve the problem of a poacher in the area who's been causing issues. And that's not true. It's the, not? The price was that he gets any and all credit for any discovery or any progress made in the attempt to cover up the masquerade breach. It just so happened that you were also trespassing on Gengrel territory, and Hermes made a deal that he would introduce the Gengrel Bree to either Dusavl or Erikfo at some point in the future. And the Gengrel thought you all were poachers. And Ryder really wanted to go investigate some abductions nearby, which just so happened to align with where Turbo thought the poacher might be hiding out. So... Oh, I correct my story then. Okay. It's been a while. No problem. That's what I'm here for. So anyway, he tells you basically that version of the story. What did the poacher look like? I described the exact person who I suplexed into the ground with no remorse. Uh-oh. Charlotte? Does that sound very familiar for me? That's the girl in the photo. God damn it, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Does her uh, facial expression change when I describe the person? Uh, she, you might see like a twitch at her like mouth. You okay? Ah, uh, should have hung out with you guys tonight. Oh, Would've been easier. Uh, I don't know, I almost... I got my ass kicked by a head with two stumpy arms and two other kindred. I think you probably fared better than us. Well, you found our missing yeah. girl. Wait, what? Yeah, that's her. You found and her. And she was taken by the other group who were trying to cover up a frenzied kindred. Who took Ryder? Oh, did she... Did she... Uh, could you tell what kind of clan she was from? The I just snakes. go, I hope you're not asking me, right? The snakes, and one of them might have been the Tremere. No, not the people that took her, the girl herself. Oh. Celia. Uh, didn't she use, like, claws on me? Fuck yeah, no. she killed her roommates! 
she is close. <laughs> Garrett, are you there? You remember mm -hmm. that she seemed very similar to you. She has almost the same exact things that I have. Interesting. So mystery clan. Did someone else have uh, claws? Or was there like one of those monsters around? Yep, one of the other kindred did. Because her roommates died viciously via claws. Uh, I didn't encounter a kindred with claws. The one I encountered had mind powers, and the other one was, admittedly, as strong as me, if not stronger. And another had blood sorcery abilities. Could be a Tremere, could have just learned blood sorcery from another Tremere. Might be good to ask Regent of Sable. Wait, okay. oh, I caught one of their names. Do you know a kindred named Clarice? Does that sound familiar to me? Well, Charlotte, that's an interesting question. I believe you belong to a very specific sect of the Tremere, if I'm... I, don't... I, I do. I do belong Rolling to that. an intelligence plus... Mm, intelligence plus awareness roll. Or investigation, if that's higher. Would you like to spend any willpower? Yes. <laughs> Alright, so put a slash through willpower and click willpower reroll and reroll up to three black dice. Ooh, four successes. Well, Charlotte, there is, in fact, a somewhat prominent Clarice that rings a few bells of yours. That sect of Tremere that you happen to admire, that House Karna, there's an offshoot of them here in Chicago that tend to be at odds with the Camarilla. And Clarice is a member of said House Karna. Hmm. Interesting. So you, you saw Clarice, you saw someone as strong as you, and someone with claws. And there was, so it was just the three kindred that came for the poacher? As far as I know, I never made it outside before things got interesting. So she was turned. Uh, definitely. Hmm. I and mean, I... in all honesty, she could have freaked out and... I don't know. Charlotte, are you familiar at all with the snakes or set? Didn't get a lot of information from Turbo. Do I know anything about that clan? Intelligence plus a cult. Yeah, I could probably roll that as well if possible. I think this is something that Charlotte specifically has a chance to know. She has Fair enough. That you don't. One could say she has, oh my god, six successes. So These are my superpowers, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I just punch things. A nearly impossible level of success is especially for a fledgling like yourself. Um, you, of course, know the myths of Seth, Seth in ancient Egypt. There's also... There used to be a fairly religiously oriented sect of kindred who called themselves sort of like the children of Seth. They weren't always the most, uh, shall we say, highly regarded kindred. However, in recent years, you've heard that some of these Settites, as they used to be called, have sought refuge and asylum within the Camarilla, and have changed their ways to align with Camarilla standards. 
those who did no longer call themselves Settites or Children of Set, or really have much of a connection with that old way. At least, not in as obvious and upfront of a way. Nowadays, they call themselves the Ministry. Or, for those who don't like them, the Snakes, because of the connection to Set. So, they're not overly common in Chicago. They're sort of a new group on the block, but in, again, in kindred terms, new just means within the past decade to a hundred years. You're not sure specifically when they joined, but you do know that there is an embassy within the Ivory Tower specifically for the Ministry. And they are supposed to be keeping tabs on all ministry activities, even those who have not converted and embraced the wisdom of the Camarilla. Okay, so they're supposed to know their peeps and where they're at. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Setites or that clan, if that's familiar. Not really. <laughs> well, they kind of, hmm, let's say they weren't the most popular. Uh, and they've gone through like a rebranding uh, as a clan. And now are more allied with the Camarilla. They're called the Ministry now. There's an We have an embassy up in the Ivory Tower. But they're supposed to be keeping track of their people. So it'll be interesting to know how one of them may be involved with possible Anarchs. And I know um, DuSable and his occasional jazz club talks with another person, right? Are you saying this to them or are you saying this to me? To you. Yeah, yes, they, you do. they don't very know. Aware okay. Do okay. You even know the exact day that it usually happens on each month. Okay. Okay. Um, whew. Okay, well, you guys have had a very promising night. Thank you. Critias will be much happier with me. Uh, not completely happy, but much happier. So that's good. Um, another problem. I need Ryder, I think. So... Well, he's gone. And yeah. why do you need Ryder? Actually, what was your SOS about? So... Uh, well, I was looking for the girl, um, right? Because, you know, Critias is pretty upset with everything. And um, I got a tip that someone of her likeness was found um, in this certain area. And I checked out the area. Turns out Kindred and maybe some humans that she's doped up a little bit. Um, and she got the jump on me. And wouldn't have been too bad, except one of my stupid students followed me there. Uh, and so I had to s keep her from getting her, you know, insides put on the wall. Um, so I need, I need brighter now. So was there a masquerade breach with your student? Do uh, no, know? no, no. Uh, we were all clandestine and stuff. However, uh, my student just thinks, oh, drug dealers and gangs, and I am <laughs> just want to like slap her and maybe fail her for the semester. Drug dealers and gangs. Well, I guess that's better than her knowing the truth and having to die. <sighs> yeah, that would suck for everyone. But it's still a sucky thing because this kid is ambitious, and she was in journalism, and she thinks she's got like the scoop of the century. Uh, so, yeah. It'll, it'll take uh -huh. some discouraging, uh, for sure. But I need, um, Ryder, because these particular kin, or this kindred, was particularly interested in a type of trade, which I believe Ryder has been seen around the medical district and the university at times, possibly involved with such types of trade. Oh, he'd be angry to know that people know about him. Hmm. Oh, he's been on my radar for the last couple of years, so. 
Oh, I could hear him seething right now. Well, unfortunately, uh, apparently the Earth ate him, and we don't know where he is. This is unfortunate. Um, I'm gonna... It's, it's getting late. Uh, I need... Don't you mean early? Ha <laughs> ha. Um, I need to get back. As much as you guys are charming, you all look like shit. Probably need to rest. Probably should eat. Um, Probably. And, and I'm definitely not resting here, Mike. You have interesting roommates. Uh, yeah, no, sometimes they try and kill me in my sleep, but they don't. So yeah, you all probably would be in a lot of danger. <laughs> God. Um, okay, you rest. I need your big brawny body. Uh, uh, I'll be honest, I'm going to be down for a while. Charlotte, give me a wits and awareness roll, please. And by the way, for those who are gathered here, except for Charlotte, do you relay the final message that Turbo gave to you all? <sighs> oh, Turbo, well, our new... Our new benefactor, Nosferatu, Nosferatu fellow, says that we should probably talk to our still-living loved ones. Because we're probably going to be in big danger soon. And on that note... You keep saying R. You mean you guys. You guys' as benefactor. Well, you're helping us, aren't you? Mike, you yep. remember that the specific terms were not just those present, but anyone who is a part of your group, who e or whoever becomes a part of your group, or who assists your group in your endeavors. Yeah, he... Yeah, that's... <laughs> I'll put it up in a second. Charlotte's about to be so bad. Uh, you're, you're guilty by association. Are you Pretty kidding much. me? Basically, get your affairs in order, because there's going to be a fight. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Uh, look at me. I try to stand up and fall over. I, my body's barely holding together right now. I'm not going to be a much help. So you need to learn how to fight or something, because it's going to get really bad. Okay, first of all, I am not a fighter. Second of all, I have I have carefully, carefully groomed my relationships in this society for a very long time, and now you guys are willy nilly attaching me to people I don't know. Uh, so this one actually technically wasn't our fault. We were not expecting to get jumped by a group of rogue kindred. And there are going to be ones coming after you. And yes, you have your relationships, but what has it actually gotten you? I, I'm very well respected within the society. I got a dress today, okay? Ooh. Speaking of dress, Charlotte, it's at that moment that you realize something moving along the wall next to you turn to look at it it's like a scream face melting through the wall and just shaking at you like something's coming through the wall is this similar to what um mike described to me before that kind of face that mike described to you before what do you mean the tower oh i see um it's not exactly similar mm. but it seems like the same family of events if you will so much crap so much crap um on that note i'm i'm a little i'm a little upset with you guys i'm gonna have to do some research i don't know anything about this turbo um wait but, you met him have i i don't think i've met turbo before yeah wasn't he was at the yeah was he at lyceum he was that lavender skinned lamprey looking nose for who came over to you uh, and um uh garrett yeah, I'm probably not going to forget that face for a while. No offense to him, he seems like an alright guy, but... He was in the, the inner thing with, uh... Was he in the inner chamber with Prince Jackson, one of those? No, he just came up to you guys while you were sitting at the bar. Oh, okay, so he's not, like, high and mighty, necessarily. Okay. Um... <sighs> Charlotte, question. No, no, sorry. Do you see this? And I point to the face, and then I start walking towards the door. I look at it. Yeah. It, it, it 
it extends itself further out of the wall with his extra I just say hi room. Steve straight faced I'm leaving <laughs> good luck with that 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 as you're leaving you approach the door and the face appears facing you and it's like Whoa! uh Hermes oh don't be mean to my friend Steve he's the homie he yeah we'll come for you I'm just gonna try to ignore it and open the door and leave <laughs> and the face melts into the door and you guys head out uh while I'm walking Charlotte question may have an answer do you know Professor Hakeem? Hakeem, I mean. Does that sound familiar to me? Remind me, he's a professor of anthropology, right? Uh, yeah. Well then, yeah, I probably yes, know him. Yes, you do know him. He is currently on sabbatical and has been for the past year. Uh, yeah, he's not been around for like a whole year now. <sighs> Have not heard a thing about him coming back? Mm, no, but I mean... He and I kind of study different things, so we didn't collaborate much. Hmm. All right, good to hear. Hope he's having fun. I, I wouldn't know. Um, you should probably get some rest. You look like crap, so. I do look like crap. You get some rest, too. This time <sighs> I'm going to go ahead and pay for an Uber back. No right. metro for me. So you all depart to your havens. Yep. You get rest for the night. And perhaps it's my rustiness for not having run a game for a long time. But some of these scenes took much longer than I anticipated. And this seems like an ideal place to close our chapter for now. Even though we didn't quite get to the chapter's namesake yet. See you all next week for more Vampire Stories.